champs. Game Time Live is delivered by Hungry Howie's Pizza, celebrating 50 years of flavor. State Champs Game Time Live is also brought to you by Lawrence Technological University. Be curious, make magic. The future of education begins at ltu.edu. Alta Equipment, Michigan's number one construction equipment provider, proudly representing the industry's top brands. Get the right equipment for your project every time with Alta Equipment. The Construction Association of Michigan, the voice of the construction industry in Michigan. U.S. Navy, transform your life and become part of something bigger. Learn more about naval careers at Navy.com. And the Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics. District final from Gross Point South High School, and we love a rematch in the playoffs. Roseville plays Gross Point South for the second time this season on a really nice early November night for football. Evan Stockton with you. Grant Perry's back alongside, and we hear from Luz Kuhn on the sidelines in just a second. Grant, it's always fun when we get a rematch. It was close and tight and low scoring last time. We hope for similar things today. We've seen a lot of great high school football talent in Michigan all fall long, and we get a chance to watch another good guy. If you haven't heard about Desmond Straughton yet for Roseville, get ready to learn about this dude. He's a great football player. Oh. On tape, I mean, he just jumps off the film. I mean, he's going to be a three, a two-way starter for this team, this Roseville uh, team, offensively and defensively, running back on offense, safety on defense. A three-year starter as a junior, I mean, that's saying something in itself. Kid can flat out play. Offensively, he'll be at running back. Just under 700 yards rushing, five touchdowns accompanied by that. And then defense, I mean, he is like the definition of no-fly zone. I mean, Gross Point South, beware. Don't throw his way because he's going to come and make a play. Sideline to sideline. And the guy can flat out play. And there's no question as to why he's got 20 plus Division One offers. Yeah, the coaching staff for Roseville thinks Des could go play in the SEC. He's that good. Oh, by the way, the Gross Point South defense is that good. This is not a misprint. I'm not misspeaking here. They've given up 52 points all season. What's going on, Grant? Why are they so good? I mean, 52 points, that's unheard of. I mean, some of the teams we've covered, they've been letting up 52 points in a half, uh, let alone all season. And when you take a deep look, you're trying to figure out why. I mean, the main point is this team plays together. I mean, they fly to the ball. They got two or three guys on a tackle, not just one guy. And they cause turnovers, 10 interceptions on the season, and they apply pressure, 14 sacks. The D-line gets pressure. The linebackers fill gaps and the safeties in the corners cover very well. And then one thing that comes to mind when looking at this team, old saying, you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And this team plays together. And if they want to keep going far in this playoff run, it starts tonight. Don't you love when Grant gets philosophical on you? It's fantastic. Let's do this thing. Gross Point South hosting Roseville, rematch of the district final. And it starts right after this. Mac cheese is up. Mac and cheese pizza? Mac and cheese pizza. That's right, the new mac and cheese pizza from Hungry Howie's. Mac and cheese, mozzarella, panko breadcrumbs, and our famous flavored crust. Only for a limited time. Hungry Howie's. At Alto Equipment, we know when it comes to getting your job completed on budget and on schedule, uptime matters. Alto Equipment has partnered with the biggest names in construction, including Volvo, Leboy, Bogan, Avant, ASV, and more to provide the state of Michigan with industry-leading service and support. Alto Equipment services all makes and models, and their technicians are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Do you have a big project? Alta Rents has you covered with the most diverse rental fleet in Michigan. Give them a call at 844-GO-TO-ALTA today. Looking for a score, a schedule, a story? MHSAA.com has you covered. Our newly redesigned website has everything you need to follow high school sports in Michigan. And it's optimized for mobile use. Fans can submit scores on a Friday night, check playoff pairings and game times, or read about the student athletes from your community. Your first stop is MHSAA.com. Connect with us online and get everything you need all in one place. Curiosity arrives 
lighting a path you tenaciously pursue. The unknown presents new challenges, drawing you to a future ready for change. You'll find your calling is closer than imagined. A destination with all the technology and tools to make magic. Lawrence Technological University. Be curious. Make magic. I tell you what, thank goodness we're playing this game tonight and not a couple of days ago when it was snowing for all the poor trick-or-treaters on Halloween. It's a really comfortable night, mid-50s on this gorgeous campus of Gross Point South High School. Fun one coming up between Gross Point South and Roseville, a rematch of a game played earlier this year. They played right near the end of September on the 22nd when Gross Point South won 16 to seven. The rematch of the district final is coming up in just a few. Excited for this one between a talented Roseville team against a Gross Point South team that is nine and one and has only given up 52 total points all season. It's been a really good program over the years. Group Point South had Will Johnson as part of his team a couple of years ago. Of course, Will Johnson now starring for the Michigan Wolverines. Excited to watch this year's version of the Blue Devils tonight. Before we get there, though, we pause for our national anthem. Performs the Star Spangled Banner. Someone's winning a district championship tonight, and someone's season ends in the first week of November. For a little bit more on this matchup tonight, down to the field we go, and the third member of our crew, Elizabeth Coop. Hello, everyone, and welcome into a district championship matchup. Gross Point South going to be taking on Roseville here tonight. And like Grant and Evan mentioned earlier, these two teams matched up. Earlier in the season, it was Gross Point South that took home the win. We asked the Roseville head coach, you know, what do you need to see this go around? And he said, well, this one really matters. He said, we really need our seniors to step up. He said, we've got a lot of veteran players who are on that team that made the regional run a couple of years ago. He said, those guys really need to bring the energy, the spark, the positivity to this team. And it's really going to start with those guys leading the team and we kind of joked a little bit about earlier this week you know they had to play practice through some snow and we've got a beautiful night for this district championship matchup so we're really excited to see who takes home the trophy tonight Evan yeah Liz it's such a tricky time of year because I'm shoveling snow off my car 72 hours ago and I honestly had the AC driving to the game today it's very confusing Grant I just can't handle all these changes in the weather Oh man, nothing like Michigan come fall, you know, approaching the winter time. Uh, you never know what you're going to get here in the great state of Michigan. I almost booked a tea time for earlier today, but then I remembered I had to be here with you, you know? Well, hey, thanks for making the time. You're welcome, buddy. All right, we're about to kick this thing off. Gross Point South gets it in the air, and off we go for a district championship. Roseville's got a chance for a return on the right side, hoping for a little bit of room on that right side. Hesitation got him a little more. Holland's on the return, giving Roseville a decent starting field position right around their 35-yard line. Starting quarterback for Roseville, number six, the junior, Jordan Sims. A familiar last name to high school football fans. Jordan's brother, Kevin, one of the best wide receivers at the best team in the state, the Belleville Tigers. We've talked about Stratton, Grant. As for Sims, as he orchestrates the offense, 
Guy was a second-year starter, but what do you want to see out of him tonight? I want to see a couple of things. I want to see him play within their system. Uh, don't force any throws. That was the emphasis coach made, you know, kind of forces some throws to those good receivers. And also on some, you know, zone reads, I want to see him keep the ball and be effective with his, uh, his legs. Well, started on the ground with Stratton. Excited to see what the highly thought of junior can do tonight. Trying the right side and getting a handful of yards on first down against the Stott Gross Point South defense. Well, keep saying it because it's hard to believe. They've given up 52 points all season. They've played 10 games. That's five points per game. Anyone specific on this defense, Graham, we got to watch out for tonight? You know, pay attention to these linebackers. I mean, Lex Wilson, number 35, and, and Captain Josh Lemansky, uh, only a junior as well, Lemansky, uh, but play efficiently and really well. Stratton this time running right through those linebackers in the middle of the defense. Oh, look at the passion from Des Stratton. A big gain and a first down for Roseville in the Gross Point South Territory. And really good job here by Stratton, just getting north and south. It's an outside zone here, but looking to put the feet in the ground and get north and south, getting past those linebackers, running through arm tackles. A really effective player for them. You're going to see two running backs mainly today in Stratton, number five, and then Bryant Weathersby, number 20. More of their ground and pound type running back. Uh, get those hard yards, and, and uh, you know, Stratton's going to be your explosive playmaker. First time they give it to someone other than Stratton, and this offense for Roseville find a lot of room. That's Robert Salter running on the right side, a pseudo reverse, and once again, Roseville moves the chains. And they're going to find ways to get these athletes in space. You know, Roseville has some really good, talented receivers here, and you just saw uh, that reverse. They're going to try to find ways to get these guys the ball without forcing throws downfield. Uh, and an effective way to do that is a little toss pass and little reverses, uh, and you'll see that a lot today. Four plays, three first downs for Roseville so far. They give it right back to the same guy, Salter, but this time he's tripped up in the open field. Once again, a handful of yards for Roseville on first down. A really good job here. It's just going to be a read. Uh, you know, the quarterback here, Jordan Sims, has the option to keep it. The uh, defensive end there, Sean DeGrand, does a good job of coming up the field with uh, you know straight shoulders, making him make a decision. Ends up giving it, and only gets a three-yard gain there. Couple of minutes into the ball game, and Roseville's on the move. Sims keeps for the first time, lowers his shoulder, gets across the 30. He stopped there. So third down for Roseville for the first time tonight. They haven't tried to pass yet on this drive. Yep, they've been efficient on the ground so far. They find themselves here in a, you know, a third and five, third and six area. Uh, you know, I expect them to you know, stay within their game here, you know, but might look downfield. Uh, good receiver at the top of the screen, uh, number seven. Eric Salter is a playmaker to watch out for. The back with Sims is Weathersby, who leads the team in rushing, but he hasn't run the ball yet tonight. Sims to throw, looking in that direction. Pass incomplete. Here comes the flag. They wanted Eric Slater, and Noah Hart got handsy in coverage. Yeah, Noah Hart there, you know, understanding that if you get beat, it's a touchdown. If you don't, it's just going to be a penalty. Sometimes the best option is to, you know, interfere a little bit there, especially when you're getting beat. You know, Eric Salter had a step on him, ran a go route, you know, tried to stack him there. Uh, you know, bang, bang play, saved a touchdown, but unfortunately did, uh, you know, have some pass interference on that play. And that's a matchup, too, that, to keep an eye out for. They like to, you know, when they do take a shot and they want to throw you know, a high percentage throw, they're going to try to throw it outside here to, to Eric Slater. He's a taller receiver, a guy with seven-plus Division I offers. Uh, he just does a fantastic job of high point in the ball uh, and is a, a red zone threat and a deep threat for this uh, Roseville offense. The call was pass interference. The delay before the call, I think they were trying to figure out, do we call pass interference or holding? I called pass interference. That is a first down for Roseville. Weathersby running. First time today. Tries the right side, and there's just not very much. Andrew Pazahowski wrapping him up. Good job there. They're going to run counter, meaning they're pulling the backside guard and backside tackle. What you got to do is you got to kick out the defensive end. But Andrew Pazahowski does a fantastic job of keeping leverage, playing through the block, and making a tackle for a short game. Andrew, a junior with good size, 6'3", 190. 27 tackles on the season coming into this district final tonight. Give again on second out and long. It's Stratton trying the edge. He's going nowhere. 
beautifully wrapped up in the open field by that swarming Blue Devil defense. And for the first time tonight, Roseville's going to have third down long. And good job here, swarming to the ball. Roseville's got a lot of athletes can make, that can make some big plays here. And if you're Gross Point South, you've got to make an emphasis on gang tackling. Really good job by the, the coach's son there, Wyatt Hepner, getting to the ball and then making a play and letting the rest of the defense come and helping out. Uh, but right now, they're kind of just setting up this QB keep here. At one of these plays, Jordan Sims is going to keep this uh, ball. So this the defensive ends here for Gross Point South are going to have to stay uh, assignment sound and watch for that pull. They got to get just inside the five. Sims rolling on third down and 12. Throwing high and incomplete. He missed Salter. A little roll pass there. You know, they kind of ran like a little bit of a spacing concept. One guy sits over, you know, over the center of the ball. One guy sits, you know, right on the hitch area, you know, about five yards. Uh, gets his depth, plants down, sits, uh, and then he's just rolling. He had him open. Uh, kind of an overthrow there. You know, one of his first few passes. Uh, you know, that's a throw that Jordan Sims usually makes. Um, he's an accurate quarterback, uh, you know, sitting with an uh, Eastern Michigan offer right now. Um, you know, he's a good player right there. I bet he wish he uh, could have had that one back. So they bring on the kicking unit. This is Gabe Johnson, the left-footed kicker, who they have a lot of confidence in. But he didn't play last week because he was sick. He's all right back in the lineup tonight. The high snap is put down, and the kick is money. That thing was knocked through by Gabe Johnson. Could have made it from 40-plus. Yeah, that was a great kick, and just, you know, averaging 5.2 points at the South, Gross Point South defense giving up on the season. Right now, you know, Roseville's doing a good job here, getting on the board early on their first drive. You talk about a little bit of a confidence boost. That's going to help the Roseville group for sure. Hungry Howie's a great partner of the State Champs Network's Mr. Football and Anvil Awards. Congratulations to Hungry Howie's on 50 years of the best flavored crust pizza. You can go order your pizza at Hungry Howie's. Com. Gross Point South defense, bend, don't break. They give up the three points, but their focus every week is shutouts. They've had four shutouts this year. Do you remember the phrase the coaching staff said earlier this week? I forget the exact phrase when it comes to how many shutouts they want to have. Do you remember? Uh, you know, that's a good question. I don't necessarily know if I can recall, but I do remember Coach Hepner saying that their goal every week is to lay a goose egg, have the you know, offense lay a goose egg. Um, so that goal has kind of been thrown out the window. But like you said there, they force them to a field goal, uh, and that's going to help their offense here uh, on their possession. Johnson fresh off making that field goal to kick it away for the guys in red and white. The Roseville kick away, chance for a return for Wyatt Hepner, who hands on a reverse to Vince Vachon. That didn't fool the kick coverage unit. They won't get to the 25. Good job by the kick coverage unit of keeping your lanes. you got to stay lane uh, sound here on these kickoffs, especially when you get a reverse there. They tried to catch him off guard, but Roseville uh, was awake and, and on their game on that one. Offense for Gross Point South. Not quite as explosive as the defense, but still, they're scoring darn near 30 points per game. Jack Lupo, the junior starting quarterback. He's the first-year starting QB. Matthew Agnone, the guy who had the bulk of the carries last week. But Joey Michelotti is the guy behind Jack Luplo in the pistol. They give it to Joey. Man, he doesn't have very much at all. Maybe a yard. Nice job by Corey Cobb shooting the gap and making the tackle from his linebacker spot. Corey Cobb, that's a name you're going to hear a lot today. He plays that middle linebacker position on this 3-4 defense. Uh, sometimes those outside linebackers will walk on the line of scrimmage and make this a 5-2 look. In that situation there, Corey Cobb fills the hole, makes a great tackle. And also, it's good to see uh, Joe Michelotti here back today. He did not play last week. Uh, he's a, a key player for this, uh, this Gross Point South offense. First time Luplo wants to throw. What a catch by Vince Vachon. If you were watching in warm-ups, you're not surprised by that. He was making one-handed catches like Odell, all warm-ups, and he just did another Odell impression. I mean, talking about getting the crowd into the game, this is a great catch. Uh, you know, and this is a hard catch, too. I mean, he's leaning back over his left shoulder, makes a one-handed catch, and then still gets some yards after the catch. Really good job. Takes a big hit, but he holds onto the ball. Really good football player, one of their most explosive players on this Gross Point South offense. And that quarterback, Jack Lupo, is saying, Vince, thank you, because I've had better throws. Jack wants to throw again. Pressure coming, and he throws incomplete. 
Carter Richards, the closest man to it. And good job there. You know, the D line got a good a good push, but also the secondary had, you know was right on their man. You know, Jack Lupo didn't really have anywhere to go with that pass. The rush got on him, made a good decision, just threw a dirt ball to the nearest receiver he could find uh, to live to see another down here on second down. It's a Gross Point South offense that is trying to be even with the distribution in terms of how much they run it and throw it. Lupo coming into tonight, 203 passes on the season. Michelotti and Agnone, the two backs, each had 105 carries on the season coming into tonight. Michelotti again got rid of the first guy and turned it into a pretty darn good run. He slipped chewed in the backfield, and he makes it a much more manageable third down. Yeah, really good play. Michelotti avoids a, a tackle for loss there by Michael Chude. Michael Chude was in that backfield, a really good nose, uh, or excuse me, defensive end uh, for this Roseville defense. Michelotti puts his foot in the ground, reverses field, and makes it a positive yard, a positive play, excuse me, and a very manageable third down. a couple of yards to go and Gross Point South keeps the drive alive. They're about 43% on third downs this year. High snap, Lupo gets it down. Michelotti trying to get the first down. They spot him right near the sticks already. They have given him the first down. A really good job by Michelotti. Uh, just he takes the ball and he hits it 100 miles per hour. Uh, there's no hesitation in his game. He's going to put his foot in the ground and get north and south. Really good heads-up play as well, understanding the situation that he was in. Uh, had to pick up the first down there. Still in their territory, so you know, going for it on fourth down in this situation, maybe not the best idea. He doesn't even leave it up to a decision there. Picks up the first down. Good run. Chad Hepner, the head coach for Gross Point South. Consulting with those officials before the next play. Lupo facing pressure, got away. Jack dove across the midfield logo. Doesn't run it a ton, 51 carries on the season. Forced to here because the pressure was coming. Pressure was coming, understands that he doesn't have enough time. He's rolling out to his right and then sees immediately it's time to run. Does a good job, he gets north and south, picks up some positive yardage, runs past that D line, gets to the second level, falls down for a gain of eight. Drive for Gross Point South has crossed into Roseville territory. Second down and two from right around that 48 yard line. Quick throw, Vashawn drops it. He made an incredible one handed catch last time. This time, right on his numbers, and he dropped it. You would know better than me, man. Playing wide receiver is weird. Yeah, and he had some room to run there. Sometimes those catches, when you, you know you got no one around you, but you know, just nothing but green grass, sometimes those are the hardest catches. Got to really dial it in, focus, catch the ball, then run. Uh, you know, we saw that one handed catch there a few plays ago. Um, it's very unlike Vince to drop those passes, but I'm sure he'll make it up uh, here on this drive. Most point south shows empty in the gun. Lupo a quick throw. It is caught for the first down. Got the necessary yardage. Moving the sticks and keeping the drive alive. Converting with a short pass on third down. Really good job. When you go empty, you get an opportunity to really see what the defense is giving you. Everyone has to align to those spread out receivers. They go empty and run a little quick game, a little hitch route, if you will, and they catch Roseville in his zone defense. Jack Lupo knows where to go in these zones, does a fantastic job of finding his receiver and completing that for a, a good completion. Throw it again. They like this quick game. Another completion. Vashawn reels it in again across the 40-yard line. And good job understanding the situation there. You know, Vashon, your, your most explosive receiver on offense, lined up against Anthony Scott, a linebacker, a bigger body, a little bit slower than Vashon, gets it right on him for completion. Understanding your mismatches and your matchups is going to be crucial today uh, for both of these teams. Once again, Blue Devils go empty in the gun. Lupo wants to throw again. This time it's a shot down the field, an incomplete. Cunningham locked up in coverage with Connor Patty. Cunningham is a bigger body cornerback, 6'3", 200 plus pounds, uh, senior on this team. Uh, he got about seven pass breakups on the season, a really good defender, a lengthy guy, hard guy to complete passes on there. Uh, find, find themselves there, uh, Gross Point did in a man coverage look, and Brandon Cunningham kind of just smothered him there, and, and there was no room to complete that pass. Can Gross Point South con convert a third different third down on this drive? They're two for two to start. Keep an eye out for 88 here. Hunter 
Blasio. Lupo, rolling left. Now he's coming back right. He needs a little magic. His pass a tad high. He missed Michelotti, and now Gross Point South has to make a decision. Had his guy, Jack Lupo, scrambles, trying to keep the play alive. Does a good job of not making any bad throws or, or, or you know, ill-advised errors. Finds a guy open, and Joe Michelotti just throws it a little high. Michelotti you know, mistimed the jump there, uh, and resulting in, in a punt here on their first drive. In no man's land, on a fourth down and five from Roseville's 37, Gross Point South to punt. C.J. Rosati's been pretty good this year. Five punts inside the 20. There's his sixth punt inside the 20. Stratton calls fair catch in Roseville. Has darn near the entire field to go. Ulta Equipment knows when it comes to getting your job done on budget and on schedule, uptime matters. Ulta Equipment partners with the biggest names in construction with industry-leading service and support. Give them a call, 844-GO-TO-ULTA. Grant, I got to ask you this. What is your theory on calling fair catch inside the 10-yard line? Uh, the general rule, uh, especially going to Michigan and, and, and having coached, or having coached and you know been coached at that, you know, 10 is the kind of the, the line of demarcation. You know, you don't you keep your heels on the 10-yard line, and if it goes over your head, uh, you're supposed to let that one go, uh, as you know that touchback will give you better field position than the 10. Long way to go for Roseville. Weathersby on the first run of the drive, a big gash right up the middle. That'll always help when you're in the shadow of your end zone. Move the sticks, first down. And Weathersby with the burst here, really good job by the center and the left guard there, uh, William Woodard, the left guard, and Perrion Matthews of kind of just making that hole, making it open, and letting Bryant Weathersby, their, kind of their bruiser, run through that hole and pick up a first down there. Nine touchdowns for Bryant on the season. Sims running all the way. More room for Roseville. My goodness. They are gashing a defense that's barely given up 50 points all year. Yeah, and they go wildcat here. They're going to put Desmond Stratton, that quarterback, their best athlete, alongside Houston Eubank. Number one, he's a linebacker, DN type for them, but also plays some fullback, big blocking back, kind of leading the way there. Electric play, getting them out of their area, pushing this ball further downfield. Good play call, good execution uh, with Desmond Stratton and Houston, Houston Eubank leading the way. Just get the ball to Des Stratton and get the heck out of the way, I guess, so far in this game. Sims gives, Weathersby runs, not very much at all. He maybe got back to the line. Alex Rothis did an excellent job setting the edge. Alex Rothis, a really good player on this defense as well. He's going to be playing that Sam linebacker position, the strong linebacker. Does a good job of coming up, keeping good leverage, keeping it in, outside in uh, you know, relative to the running back swarms to the ball lets the rest of the defense come and help him as well good tackle you know this defense is going to have to swarm to the ball as these playmakers for Roseville you know can break tackles Sims throws pass caught on the edge got a long way to go and that play is blown up Herman Searcy was looking for a lifeline Wyatt Hepner another excellent tackle and Roseville's got a mile to go Really good job there by Wyatt Hepner. I mean, he could have pursued the ball originally, but then he would have lost contain because it went all the way back around field. Wyatt Hepner took a great angle uh, on that cutback uh, that Cersei had and did a fantastic job of cutting the thigh board. Came right at that thigh and cut him down for a really good tackle there and a, a big loss. Wyatt is a dynamite wrestler. Last year, he was the first guy in school history to wrestle for a state title. He looked like a wrestler on that tackle. Third down and a mile for Roseville. Sims stepping up, running. He's got a long way to go. I think he slid short of the first down. He slid a yard short, but there's a flag in the backfield. And Gross Point South takes that flag. It was a holding penalty because otherwise it was going to be fourth down and really short for Roosevelt. Yeah, it would have been fourth down and very manageable. They got the athletes to, to go ahead and convert that, uh, but they get you know bailed out there a little bit by that penalty. Uh, but Jordan Sims, man, the guy can run. Would like to see him keep running tonight to add that 11th element for Gross Point South to have to cover. I never fault the quarterback for sliding. They need you. Stay healthy. 
it's just always tough to watch when the poor guy slides a yard short of the first down. Yeah, it's tough. And, and sometimes you got to you know, learn how to slide two ways, right? Slide, you know, the baseball slide on your bottom, but also dive head first and pick up the first down and not get down short in that situation. Third down forever. They keep it on the ground with Stratton, hoping for a little lightning bolt. Tez does the best he can. He is tackled after a nice game, but way short of the first down. And Roseville forced to punt. And a good job there. You're understanding that you have about you know 15 to 17, you know, 18 yards, excuse me, to, you know, to really let him run, but not let him get to the first down. Uh, you know, Desmond Stratton can really hurt defenses, and in that situation, they do a good job of keeping contain and only letting him pick up a few yards there and forcing a punt. Gabe Johnson, the guy you saw making that field goal for Roseville earlier on in this quarter, he's also the punter, and he's also one of the backup quarterbacks. I don't know if Roseville's calling a fake on fourth and 13 from inside their 30. Dan Campbell isn't their coach, but we'll see. Roseville doesn't have to snap it again until the second quarter. They will not do so. We'll take it to the second quarter. Good ball game brewing here for a district championship. Roseville up 3-0, but they're about to punt it back to Gross Point South after this quarter break. Check that into the first quarter. We got a ball game. Mac and cheese is up. Whoa. Mac and cheese pizza? Mac and cheese pizza. That's right, the new mac and cheese pizza from Hungry Howie's. Mac and cheese, mozzarella, panko breadcrumbs, and our famous flavored crust. Only for a limited time. Hungry Howie's. I said I'd never join. And I want to get to work on one of these! Never knew how strong I was! I figured I'd never get out of my hometown. Or be the one who stops an attack. Joining the Navy sounds crazy. Saying never actually is. At Alto Equipment, we know when it comes to getting your job completed on budget and on schedule, uptime matters. Alto Equipment has partnered with the biggest names in construction, including Volvo, Leboy, Senebogan, Avant, ASV, and more to provide the state of Michigan with industry-leading service and support. Alto Equipment services all makes and models, and their technicians are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Do you have a big project? Alta Rents has you covered with the most diverse rental fleet in Michigan. Give them a call at 844-GO-TO-ALTA today. Hey guys, welcome back. We asked Coach Hefner about what it's like coaching his son Wyatt, and he said it just adds a whole nother level of excitement to the game. He said, you never really know if your son's going to love the same things you do, and obviously Wyatt has that love for football just like his dad, and actually Coach Hefner was coached by his dad, so Wyatt's adding that third generation. Evan? You know, Liz, it, it is remarkable, right? It's like that ride at Disney World. It's a small world after all. It's true here for Gross Point South football. Knuckleball punt fielded by Wyatt Hefner. And he gets across midfield, gives a little stiff arm, stays low to the ground, and gets across the 45-yard line for Gross Point South. Every high school sporting event in our great state of Michigan has one thing in common, the officials. And officials are needed right now more than ever. Go to MHSA.com for a little more information because without officials, it's only practice. Okay, so it's wild enough that the head coach, Chad Hepner, has his kid, Wyatt Hepner, on the team, and the grandpa, Russ, was coaching the program once upon a time. But there's another wrinkle to this story that I'll tell you after this play. Jack Lupo, the quarterback, he's throwing a quick one to Vashon, but it's low and incomplete. It'll be second down. Jack Lupo's dad was the starting quarterback here at Gross Point South when Chad Hepner was the starting running back. So one generation ago there was a Lupo and Hepner on the team. Now there's another Lupo and Hepner on the team. Apparently no one ever leaves this town. Nope. And it just, you know, the coaches say that story and they tell it and then they follow it up by, man, do I feel old saying this. So <laughs> you know, it's really cool to see all these generations come through. Uh, but, but the only downside is the coaches feel a little bit older uh, telling those stories. Second down here for the Blue Devils. Second generation Lupo rolling and throwing down the field. That's incomplete. 
Good coverage on the play by Hanklin Elston. Yep, good job there by Hanklin Elston, but also Connor Patty there. They're running a stick concept, uh, which is essentially a flat route there with a, you know, another stick route and a five yard out inside of that. Uh, and then the outside receiver, Connor Patty, has got to go deep. He's got to take it vertical, which he does, but he slows down and doesn't keep running. Uh, Jack Lupo looks at the out route, looks at the flat route, nothing's there, tries to go deep, but his receiver, Connor Patty, kind of stopped his feet, stopped running there. Like to see him run through it. Uh, you know, and then maybe there would have been a completion. Rose Point South converted a couple of third downs on the last drive. But they never completed a third down as long as this. Third down, 10. They put the big tight end, Belanger, as the front right receiver in that stack. Lupo roll into the right. He's looking for Balaje, but he throws it low and incomplete. And Gross Point South goes three and out. Three and out here. You know, you'd like to see them continue the drives, get a little bit of momentum here. But you know, talking to Coach Snowden, the head coach here uh, for Roseville, uh, you know, I always like to ask these coaches, you know, hey, you know, what, what's your percentage, you know, blitzing, you know, wise? And, and most of the coaches say situational, uh, but Coach Snowden, he said, oh, we're gonna come. And they're coming right now. They're applying a lot of pressure here, not giving Jack Lupo much time to throw. He's kind of having to try to make some things help uh, as he goes. Uh, and right now, uh, Gross Point South is going to have to try to find a way to give Jack Lupo some time in these long down and, uh, downs on third down. Rosati's last punt, fair caught inside the 10. This one rolling and dying right near the 10. That is the second time tonight C.J. Rosati has downed Roseville inside their red zone. Are you considering the U.S. Navy as enlisted or as an officer? Learn about the American Navy and your career opportunities within the U.S. Armed Forces. Contact the local U.S. Navy recruiting office, 734-679-1998, the number to call. Third drive of the ball game for Roseville. The first one stalled right around the 20, and Gabe Johnson kicked a field goal to give him this 3-0 lead. The last drive, they did get a couple of first downs and then some penalties forced them to eventually punt it away. We will see, Grant, what tone this third drive takes. It's starting right around the 10. Jordan Sims keeps and runs into a gross point south wall. This defense on the last couple of drives looking a lot like the bunch who's barely given up any points all year. Yeah, they've been showing us here these last couple of drives that you know this is the team that has only allowed 52 points all season. Uh, you know, at offense is coming in. Uh, and really good job there by Jake Kozell in that defensive line there of giving nowhere to go. Uh, it's going to be a jet sweep read, meaning the quarterback has the option to give it to that jet sweep motion or keep it. He sees it as a, get, a keep read and then just runs into a brick wall and Jake Kozell and the rest of the gang, and they uh, make the tackle there. Weathersby left, got a little bit of a crevice this time, got across the 15-yard line, diving ahead to the 19-yard line. Henry Domzalski made the tackle, but that's a good gain on second down, making it a third down and a lot more manageable. Yep, really good job there, Bryant Weathersby, hit the hole running, and you can see on that run there that you know he is that power back uh, in this offense. I mean, runs through the tackles and then punishes the guys that tackle him. But really good tackle there by Henry uh, Domzalski. Uh, you know, led, the, or excuse me, was the second in tackles last time they played Roseville this season. Uh, really a force at that safety position. Strutting up the middle. Des Strutton in a foot race. A touchdown saving tackle was made by Domzalski. Des Strutton with a lightning bolt right up the chute. And you get power in Weathersby, and then you get speed and burst. In Stratton. And Stratton, and Des just showed it there. I mean, he hit the hole running 200 miles per hour and then gets to the third level and then a, just a shoestring tackle to save the touchdown there. Uh, and as he goes on, he'll learn to get those feet up. And we just talked about, you know, Domzowski's, uh, you know, tackling ability and a really good tackle there. Came at a great time, saved six points. Roseville on the move. Right back to Stratton, cutting it up with Rube. Des Stratton spinning for another first down. One of the best juniors in the Midwest starting to cook. And you know, this team in Gross Point South, they only held Roseville to, to seven, they held Roseville to seven points last time they played. 
uh, which is fantastic. I mean, you see the athletes on the field, you see the speed that Roseville brings, uh, and you can only hope to contain a guy like Dez Stroughton because, I mean, he's going to get his yardage. I mean, he's just too elusive and too fast. I mean, he gets past the D-line, and he's already stepping to the linebackers. He gets past the linebackers, and he's almost running away from these safeties. Uh, you know, and right now, Gross Point South is going to have to figure out a way when he's at, you know, at running back, how do we contain him? And right now, you're going to see Dez Stroughton at quarterback. They're running the Wildcat with Houston Eubank leading the way as a blocker here. Dez keeps, has room again. Desmond Stratton lowering his shoulder, finishing the run strong. That's another Roseville first down. And a really strong tackle, gave him a good pop. Wyatt Hepner, number 25, did a good job of coming in there and letting him, you know, letting him know, hey, if you're going to run, we're going to be here to tackle you. But not before Des Stratton. I mean, just the way he runs, he runs fast, he runs physical, and he's up to the third, second level before you can even think about getting a hand on him. Roseville offense, another solid drive. Sims throws, caught on the edge, not a whole heck of a lot. Salter did make the catch, Gross Point South rallied to the ball well, and the tackle made at the 25. Gross Point South doing a good job there. That's the second time we've seen that modern day triple option, right? They're gonna run a little bit of a zone read. If the quarterback sees it's a keep read, he's gonna keep it. He's gonna get to the edge, and if the edge isn't there, he's gonna dish it out uh, to that smoke screen in uh, Robert Salter. A uh, really good job of containing that. It's a hard play, you know, gotta stay assignment sound. Uh, so props to Gross Point South on that. Weathersby up the middle. Brian Weathersby stays on his feet, and he's got a touchdown. Touchdown number 10 this season for number 20 in white and red. And you just got to credit the O-line there. The left, the, excuse me, the right guard, uh, Sean Jones in the center, per, uh, Perion Matthews just lead the way, open up a hole there. And then White Hapner had an attempt uh, of a tackle there, but that's not Stroughton there. That's, that's Bryant Weathersby and him, and he'll run through hits. You got to wrap him up. Really good job. Exploded through the line of scrimmage and then left everyone in the dust there. And Roseville here is putting Gross Point South in a predicament, in a situation where they haven't really found themselves much this season. The last time these two teams played, third week of September, Roseville scored seven points the whole game. We're four minutes into the second quarter and they have 10 tonight. The next home game for the Lawrence Tech Blue Devil football team tomorrow against Taylor. The game is live on TV20 Detroit at high noon. Grant, Liz, and myself, Evan Stockton, have the call. More info, go to ltuathletics.com. Grant, thank goodness we like football because that's a quick turnaround, man. One game at 7 o'clock one night and a nooner the next day. Oh, man, it's like a red-eye flight. I mean, you're just going straight into it. I can't wait. Uh, it should be a really good game here. Lawrence Tech versus Taylor. Uh, senior night for Lawrence Tech. Uh, Lawrence Tech looking to get a win here in the win column. I mean, they got a, you know, a win or so, but you know they're looking just to make a stamp on the end of their season here. As for this ball game, I mean, how can you not be impressed with the way that Roseville has come in with the game plan? And man, so far they're executing this thing. Yeah, they are. And, and going back and you, you watch it as much as you can, and, and, and you know finding the clips for the, the last game they played in was a little hard. But you know you just it's hard to envision that this Roseville team was only held to seven points, uh, and it makes you think of what did Gross Point, uh, Gross Point South do well, and what do they need to do right now to get back to that? Because right now they don't have an answer for this run attack. Weathersby had the last touchdown run, and Johnson's kick into the end zone means that Gross Point South will take the field and start at the 20-yard line. As for the Gross Point South offense, Grant, what adjustments are you trying to make here? Uh, offensively, like you mentioned off air there, you know, they're going to the quick game because they're, you know, Roseville's getting a lot of pressure here in the backfield. So I'd stick to the, the quick game throws, try to get the ball out of Lupo's hand fast. Also, another guy that we haven't called yet is Hunter uh, Bellage, uh, a guy that really is a big body target. Coach said, uh, Coach Hepner said that, you know, he's open even when he's not. Uh, 6'3", 245 pound guy. I'd like to see them get him involved. They motion Vashon and give it to him on a little pot pass, hoping for a block on the edge, but that was sealed off well. Maybe a yard and a half. Brandon Cunningham, number 11, 
stood there like a wall. Stood there like a wall. It was getting blocked, but understood the assignment, right? He sees the ball coming to him. Can't give his leverage up. He's got outside container at the cornerback position. Uh, Connor Patty, number 10, is trying to drive his feet. But, you know, Brandon Cunningham standing 6'3", 200-plus pounds here. That's a tough guy to block, tough guy to move. A really good job. Uh, you know, and these cornerbacks, sometimes they'll give up. They'll try to make a play inside the block. But that's when you get sealed inside and you give up the outside uh, lane there. Good job by Brandon Cunningham forcing that thing to your help. Same play to the other side. Vashawn spun, gained maybe another yard, but right now this Roseville defense and Corey Cobb are swarming all over the field. And Corey Cobb, uh, you know, talking with Coach this week, Coach Snowden, the head coach here for Roseville, and I like to ask him, who's some of your best tacklers? Who's the guy that's going to make a lot of tackles in this game? And he said without hesitation, Corey Cobb. And look at that form tackle. I mean, head right on the ball, driving the legs, you know, in a power-producing you know, position. Form tackle, really good job there by Corey Cobb Jr. Uh, he's a really good player to watch out for here. Uh, quote unquote, one of their best tacklers on this Roseville defense. Gross Point South forced to call a timeout as that Roseville defense has them in another third down and long. The Construction Association of Michigan provides a vast resource array of services, information, and training to our diverse membership within Michigan's construction industry. Go to buildwithcamp.com for more information. Well, Ghost Point South basically tried the same play twice. It didn't work. How do you think they're drawn up in that huddle, Brad? I was trying to listen in, trying to eavesdrop a little bit there. Our camera crew down there, Chuck and, and gang, were, were doing a good job of getting in on that huddle there. Uh, couldn't quite hear what they were saying, but you got to imagine here, third and seven, you, know, you could try to go back to the air here. Um, and, you know, understanding what Roseville is doing defensively, right? They're applying a lot of pressure here. Uh, so you got to get the ball out of your hands. They're going to go a bunch set here uh, in Gross Point South. Look for some type of spacing concept. Guys are trying to go different angles, crossing paths, trying to find a, a spot to sit over the ball. Pressure coming, it's picked up. Now Lupo throws a sidearm pass that's picked. INT for the senior captain, Anthony Scott. And really good job here by Scott. He's an outside linebacker, but when he's split out here, he's playing essentially a defensive back position. The Grand Valley commit, the captain, does a good job of just clamping the receiver here. I mean, just stays on him. The receiver runs a little bit of a five-yard out route, and then Anthony Scott drives the ball, comes flat, does a fantastic job. And as a quarterback, when you're throwing those out routes, when you're throwing across the field, you got to make sure you put that thing outside of the defender, outside of your receiver, right? You can't leave that thing short and inside. That is... Uh, Interception Central. The seventh INT of the season for Scott, who stays on the field preparing to block at the tight end spot. This Roseville team is rolling. They motion Salter, give it to him, and he is domino down. That ball came out, but the runner was down, and I don't blame Salter for losing the ball. There was a combination tackle here that is going to leave an ice bath in Salter's future. Yep. Andrew uh, Pazahowski does a fantastic job of getting out there and making this thing have to cut back. And then guess who? Wyatt Hepner there with a the form tackle, clean tackle. Yes, he looks like he's down, uh, but you know, really good job rattling to the ball. And they're going to have to try to get this ball out of their hands here uh, when he's up. Right? they got to force a turnover here, especially when they're in their own territory. Others be up the middle, trudging his way past the line of scrimmage. Couple of yards, that's it. And now a Roseville offense that hasn't tried to throw it very much tonight. Probably going to have to do it here, third down long. Third down and long. And quarterback Jordan Sims uh, you know, gave a target here early to, to uh, Eric Slater, uh, one of their best receivers, uh, number seven. Uh, look for him to go their way again, right? He sits in the boundary. He's the X receiver. Um, he's going to be lined up at the top of your screen next to number two, uh, Robert Salter. I look for them to try to you know, hit a little bit of a go ball or some type of man-beating route as he's getting press coverage. Play action. Sims on the wheel route. Oh, it was just too tall. Scott was open. Really good job here, and you can tell Roseville's taking a play out of uh, Anchor Bay's playbook. Anchor Bay did a fantastic job of getting their tight end and their running backs involved out of the backfield. They just slip them out, and no one, no one's covering them. Uh, number 33, Lemansky, the captain, is a little bit late getting there, and Jordan Sims, as he progresses, he'll understand it. In that situation, when you have a guy so open and you need seven yards, go ahead and lay that thing up. Let it essentially be a punt. Let him catch it in his, you know, right in his chest, and then run for a first down. 
Uh, that's a throw I know Jordan Sims can make and also would like back. That is what the coaching staff said about Jordan this week. They love him, but he's still growing, and sometimes he makes youthful mistakes. Got to grow up here, fourth down. He's looking back the other way. Didn't have time to throw. He sacked. Sean DeGrand, his third sack of the season. And that couldn't have come at a better time. You're sitting at fourth and seven. You're defending your own red zone area. And they're going to run, they're trying to run a little bit of a halfback slip screen to Desmond Stratton. But the D line's all over it, understanding that when you get free rush to the quarterback, something's up. Sean DeGrand does a good job of diverting what he's doing and going straight to the quarterback, wrapping him up for a turnover on downs. Really good play, especially after that turnover uh, you know, from the Gross Point uh, South offense. This sport is all about momentum shifts. That was a potential big one. Lupo gives and Gross Point South for one of the rare times tonight. Find some room up the middle. The runner was down. Charlie and this Nicolotti is a solid gain on first down for the Blue Devils. Yep, they're just going to have Jack Kendall, number two, that big linebacker, just lead the way. A little bit of a blocking back. Good job there. That's the, the brother of the, the uh, you know, excuse me, I, mixing up my names here. That's the, the Michelotti brother, the youngest of them all. Charlie, number 46, saw some carries in that Lance Cruz playoff game a week ago. Uh, and has really proved to the coaching staff this week, hey, he's got a burst. He comes from a lineage of really good athletes and his brothers. So let's give him some run. And you see him getting a carry here in the second quarter of the district game. Charlie running again. There's your burst again. There is a Gross Point South first down. You know, credit to this Gross Point South coaching staff because they don't care. They just want to win ball games. This guy is a freshman who's been on JV all year. Looks good in practice. Put Charlie out there. Hey, put him out there. And sometimes you need a little bit of a spark, right? A guy that hasn't been on tape, you know, he comes into the game and you're like, well, who's 46, right? You know, you know, what package are they in? And the next thing you know, he's just bursting up the middle. Really good job. Carried the ball six times last week at about 10 yards. Uh, but he's getting better and better each week. And said he had a really good week of practice and he's earned the right to play today. Lupo throwing, that was incomplete. Incomplete. Threw it essentially into no man's grant, land grant, and Elijah Parker nearly had a pick it. Yeah, Elijah Parker run into his right, his, his right, trying to cover the defender, but sees the ball is you know, thrown back inside. Uh, almost makes a great catch, but the ground definitely assists on that. I know. Ill-advised throw, not sure where Lupo was going with that one as his defenders were, or his, me, his receivers were moving out towards the sideline, left that one inside and high a little bit. Uh, they come away with a, a big break there and they have an opportunity here on second down to keep this ball moving. Charlie Michelotti remains at running back. They give it right back to the freshman. Not a lot this time. Spun ahead for a couple Charlie of yards, Michelotti. that's it. Michelotti. The guy who nearly Michelotti. just had the pick, Parker, makes the tackle here. Yeah, and, and Elijah Parker understood that he missed an opportunity by that interception, and the Bowling Green commit said, you know what, I'm going to get in on this next tackle and make you know, an impact that way. Does a fantastic job. He's an outside linebacker, comes off the edge, sees that the ball commits down the middle, comes flat, makes a tackle, uh, and makes this a third down and eight. Those points south. Has had success on third downs tonight. But a third down and eight will always make you a little bit nervous. Got to get to Roseville's 44. Lupo dropping back. He's given the time and floating an incomplete pass. Hoping for Vashawn. And I wonder if we see the punt team again. Gotta imagine you do there. Uh, they run a little bit of an interesting concept there. They got twin receivers to the side there. They're trying to get the Sean one-on-one matchup. Does a little bit of a spin, uh, you know, trying to get you know the defender to drive. Then he's gonna try to spin and get deep, turn it into a corner route. It looks like, uh, and that time, uh, the, the safety there. Also another coach's son, Bryant Holland Snowden, uh, with a good defense. C.J. Rosati's been a busy man tonight. Couple of his punts have been down inside the 20. Punter preparing to send it to Des Stratton, who's back deep for Roseville. Rosati sends it away. This is not a good punt. Off the side of his foot. And Roseville will have very good starting field position. 
Roseville has Division II playoff experience. They were in the Division II playoffs just a couple of years ago. They had to forfeit their first three games because they had an ineligible player. They were led that year by Tyrell Henry, who was a state champs Mr. Football candidate, now playing for the green and white at Michigan State. Roseville reeled off eight wins in a row and also won the first ever district championship in school history. Trying to go for another district title tonight. Off to a good start, up 10-0. And because that last punt was poor, only good starting field position at the 45-yard line. Look for Roseville here, maybe on this drive, maybe you know later in the game, try to get these receivers involved with some screen actions, right? You know, some, some quick hitters on the perimeter. Get these athletes the ball in space, let them maneuver, let them make it a kick return and find the blocks. Uh, they like to get to some screen games. Uh, especially when they go spread out three receivers to one side. Sims off play action, throws to the outside. Was that caught along the sidelines? It was not. Slater went up, tried to keep those feet in bounds and haul it in, but the coverage was airtight from Noah Hart. Fantastic, I mean, just textbook teach tape here by Noah Hart. I mean, you're getting outsized, right, by, by Eric Slater, the 6'3 receiver. It goes up, high points the ball, but Noah Hart doesn't quit. Plays through the play, plays through the ball as you're taught as a defender. You know, even if he catches it, you play to the whistle, you try to reap that, rip that ball out, you separate his hands from the ball. Does a fantastic job there of coming away with a huge PBU. They tried that play to Slater on the outside a couple of times. Hasn't worked yet. Strutton left. This is usually a good decision. Give it to Des Strutton and let him make a little magic. Another first down for Roseville. I mean, the speed on Strutton is just blaring. And they're running a the counter here, meaning the backside tackle and guard are going to pull for the front side. He is so fast and he hits it so fast that he outruns his blockers. Uh, but that doesn't matter when you got speed like that and you can get to the edge and the defenders don't even see you coming. I mean, really good job getting to the sideline and making a big play there, getting it in to Gross Point South's territory. All but one of the drives for Roseville have been into Gross Point South territory. Weathersby up the middle. Looks like a bowling ball sometimes with how low he stays to the ground. That's another solid gain of just about nine on first down. Really solid gain. The running back looks like he's going to be going in an outside zone track, meaning he's going to be trying to get outside the offensive tackle, but it puts his foot in the ground, and it's more of an inside zone, inside the tackle run uh, with a lead blocker. Uh, and then Wyatt Happner, another name that we've been calling a lot tonight, head coach's son, does a fantastic job of sticking his nose in there and making a good tackle. That was the opposite of a generous spot. Looked like Weathersby got down to the 28. They marked him at the 30. They gave it to Stratton. He's up the middle with a flag behind the play. Stratton stays on his feet, stays inside the pylon. He's into the end zone for a touchdown. Well, we got to check the flag. And judging by Stratton's reaction, I think it's coming back. We will get the call at some point. They've already moved the ball back. The touchdown is not going to count. Illegal procedure against the Panthers. Legal procedure, legal formation on Roseville. So back them up and wipe that touchdown off the board. I think the student section theme tonight was skiing or snowboarding. I'm just guessing. Sims gives, Stratton runs. He's still not down. It took three different guys to bring him down. It's up to near the 30 yard line. It makes it a third down and manageable for Roseville with under two minutes to go, first half. Yep, two minutes to go here, you're in Rose Point South territory. You know, right now you're gonna try to, you know, let this clock run down a little bit. You know, you don't have to snap it right at the, you know, right when you get lined up here, you know, soak as much time down as you can. Uh, you, you got electric playmakers here. You're sitting at a third and five. It's looking more like a third and three, third and four here on the field. But right now, Desmond Strawn and Bryant Weathersby can't be stopped. Third down, Sims throws. Pass was high but caught and short of the first down. That's a nice job by Searcy going up in the air to get the ball. 
And now Roseville forced to make a decision. It's fourth down. Like you said, great catch there and great concentration by Herman Searcy. And that's not a fun area to catch the ball, especially when those D linemen understand uh, that that you know, screen pass is coming and they turn around and go and try to relate. Uh, and this D line for Gross Point South has been doing a fantastic job of covering the screen game. Um, so you've got to give a compliment to the coaching staff on that end. Uh, they're ready for the screens. Uh, they've been practiced and prepped for it. Uh, and it's a big third down, uh, excuse me, big fourth down here. Give to Stroughton, wrapped up, stayed on his feet somehow, but Desmond Stroughton does not have the first down. He had a second effort, then a third effort, but Gross Point South would not let him get it. Oh my goodness, the Chris Berman voice was about to come out here uh, if he would have got this fourth down conversion here. But uh, just going again to what we've been saying about this Gross Point South defense, they don't give up, they don't stop, especially when it looks like he's about to get the, the, the conversion there. They all rally to the ball. A really good job. It looks like he was getting tackled the first time, then the second time, and then the third time. But the Gross Point South rallies to the ball, and they can bring him down there. Coming up at the half, Lauren Plant will explain the criteria for selecting the Mr. Football and Anvil Awards. And he also sits down with Alan True from 24-7 Sports for the latest recruit report. It was interesting to watch those last couple of minutes because neither team called a timeout. Gross Point South, which gets the ball to start the second half, now has two timeouts in 47 seconds. Ball's at the 30-yard line. Lupo dropping back, navigating the pressure. And throwing incomplete. Once again, the coverage was strong from Hanklin Elston. Really good job there by Hanklin Elston. I mean, the receiver does a great job of selling the go route. And that's what you want to do on these comebacks or these out routes, these deep developing routes that have timing. You got to understand that on those routes, you have time to work your route. You don't have to get into it and then get out of it. Really good job there by Connor Patty, number 10, of trying to sell the go route and making an out route. But Hanklin Elston is just sitting there at that depth, ready to go. Makes a great play on the ball. Uh, and right now, you know, Gross Point South is in the predicament of where, hey, do we keep trying to push this ball upfield and risk, you know, a turnover or, you know, a, a bad, you know, situation happening, or do we keep going and we push the tempo? Uh, be interested to see what they decide to do here uh, with, you know, 40 seconds left here in, in the second quarter. Because, oh, by the way, Roseville's got three timeouts left, so you're also playing a dangerous game there, too. Lupo throwing again. It's incomplete. Richards tried to make a one-handed catch, and it's third down. Yeah, had a step on him, had an opportunity. If he could have got that inside arm up, he maybe could have caught it in the basket. Uh, the ball hit right off his outside hand there in Carter Richards. Uh, but, you know, just coming back to Jack Lupo there, that's a good ball placement. Um, you know, with really tight coverage, I mean, Hanklin Elson is doing a fantastic job of sticking on the receiver, not giving him much room for the throw. Good job by Jack Lupo, the quarterback for Gross Point South, number seven of trying to find an area in that tight coverage to put the ball. Joey Michelotti back in. They give it to him. Looking for real estate. Joey Michelotti has the first down. Ball came out again, but he was down. And Gross Point South moves the chains. Yeah, good job there. You know, Gross, uh, excuse me, uh, Roseville is expecting you know, probably a pass there on third down and long. But they go ahead and stick it to the ground there and give it to, to Michelotti, a guy that really can get those hard yards. Uh, you know, that ball, you know, came out a little, you know, right when he was down. Um, he does have three fumbles on the season. Two have been lost. Um, you know, but thankfully he was down there and Gross Point South can continue this drive uh, with 18 seconds left. And they did burn a timeout. Right now on the clock, it says 18 seconds. I'm curious to see if they add any time back on. In case you're wondering in terms of the field goal situation for C.J. Rosati and the kicking game for Ghost Point South, they've only tried one field goal all year. Those gleaming gold helmets huddled up around Chad Hepner. Talked about how he's a Gross Point South alum, class of 93. Maybe Chad's second year as the head coach, but he's been a coach here since 2001. As for the coaching staff for Roseville, led by Bernard Snowden, fifth year head coach who was about as impressive as a man as you'll find. Says he took the Roseville job because he saw the potential, he saw the athleticism, but he just wanted to set a winning mindset and fight through some complacency. This has not been a place in first half. Nope, nope. They have taken that, that chip and they put it on their shoulder and they look hungry here tonight. Lupo on first down. 
has all the time in the world because Roseville was only rushing three. Now more pressure comes, and Jack just has to bench it. And the referee there with a great pass breakup on the sideline. Uh, but no, there, Jack Lupo trying to find his you know, open target, you know, playing a little bit of a recess, you know, uh, playground ball there back there. D-line's kind of playing the, the rush, but wait and try to see where he's going. Uh, Lupo tries to find an open receiver there. Uh, you know, and then the you know, Roseville secondary. I mean, talking to Coach Snowden, he said that, you know, we asked him, I mean, he's got linebackers committed, you know, all everywhere. I mean, Bowling Green, uh, Grand Valley. And, and we asked him, you know, what, what position group on your defense is, is playing at the you know, highest level right now? And he said, without a doubt right now, the secondary. I mean, one touchdown given up. I mean, they're playing fantastic ball, and they did a really good job on that playground-type play to stick in with their receivers. Or the, uh, their receivers. Need the secondary again. Lupo spinning, keeping his eyes downfield, and throwing incomplete. Carter Richards went up, tried to catch it, couldn't bring it in. And there's only two Brandon seconds remaining. Two seconds left, and that wasn't an easy throw. I mean, Jack Lupo fits that ball over a 6'3", 200-pound cornerback, and Brandon Cunningham, number 11, guy that's got you know tonight or coming into the night seven pass breakups. Uh, that's a that's a risky throw, but one you got to make here with no with no time left. Uh, but you know, Carter Richards getting you know, away with a little push off, drops the ball. You know, it could have been a big play there, but you know, with two seconds left, uh, not much time to work with here in the second quarter. Time to find out. What plays Gross Point South has deep in the playbook? Should be the final snap of the first half. Lupo rolling left. Looking downfield, pass was tipped and incomplete, and that caps off one heck of a first half for the Roseville defense. They're coming in hot. They shut out Port Huron Northern in the first round. And right now they're pitching another shutout against Gross Point South on the road in the district final. Roseville lost to Gross Point South back in the third week of September. That was another low one. 16 to seven was the final score on that day. On this night, Roseville leads Gross Point South 10-0 in one of those defensively stout football games that only us Midwest football fans can truly love with a passion. Bernard Snowden, the head coach for Roseville, standing by with Liz on the sidelines. Coach, able to score first, have some big plays offensively. What do you want to continue to see in the second half? Well, we got we to gotta execute. We still got to execute better. Defense playing good, but offensively, we got to execute better. We got the touchdown call back because we didn't execute, you know, someone not on the line of scrimmage. So for the most part, we just got to continue to execute and playing, you know, defensively playing good. Yeah, and defense holding them scoreless in the first half. You know, we see the guys get a little hyped up. How do you continue that energy moving into the second half? I mean, if you got to get the guys going for a district championship, then, you know, <laughs> I think our guys are locked in and, you know, the energy is there. We just, like, it, it, it just goes back to execution and doing the little things right. Yeah, and what's going to be the message in the locker room? Just keep playing. We got to play, and it's not over, you know what I'm saying? Being down 10, this is, this is a good team. So we got to we gotta come out and score. We got to come out and score. We got to continue to play defense, but mainly we got to execute. Yeah, thanks, Coach. Thank you. All right, guys, we'll be back after this. State Champs Nation, there has never been a more exciting time to consider Lawrence Technological University. Just minutes away from two of Southeast Michigan's most popular entertainment destinations in Royal Oak and downtown Detroit, with five colleges to choose from, every admitted student is automatically reviewed for scholarships, ranging from $4,500 to $16,000 per year. LTU also offers over two dozen Division II level varsity NAIA sports and unlike NCAA Division III schools, full athletic scholarships. Come to Lawrence Tech's visit day on Saturday, November 18th to see state-of-the-art labs, meet passionate professors, and learn why a technologically focused education turns curiosity into magic. Sign up for visit day Saturday, November 18th at ltu.edu. Welcome State Champs Women. Is it your dream to play your favorite sport in college? State Champs Women is dedicated to providing females the equal coverage they deserve while bringing awareness to the gaps in the recruiting process for women. 
We want you to build a recruiting profile with us. In three easy steps, you can be on your way to finding your dream school and lifelong teammates and friends. Connecting futures, unlocking potential. We are State Champs Women. Mac and cheese is up. Whoa. Mac and cheese pizza? Mac and cheese pizza. That's right, the new mac and cheese pizza from Hungry Howie's. Mac and cheese, mozzarella, panko breadcrumbs, and our famous flavored crust. Only for a limited time. Hungry Howie's! At Alto Equipment, we know when it comes to getting your job completed on budget and on schedule, uptime matters. Alto Equipment has partnered with the biggest names in construction, including Volvo, Leboy, Senebogan, Avant, ASV, and more to provide the state of Michigan with industry-leading service and support. Alto Equipment services all makes and models, and their technicians are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Do you have a big project? Alta Rents has you covered with the most diverse rental fleet in Michigan. Give them a call at 844-GO-TO-ALTA today. What's up, Michigan? We're doing it again. It's an update. The state champs Mr. Football race presented by Hungry Howie. Sean Belisian in the house. And Sean, we're going to kind of just reiterate what the criteria is for Mr. Football because a lot of people just think, oh, they just get in a room and they just pick a guy. That's not how it happens. We do do that, but there is a method that we follow. And basically, I'll just read it real quick and then we'll talk about it. 30% goes to performance throughout the season. 20% is the level of competition. 20% is the online vote, 15% the big game performance, 10% is your overall team success, 5% is the highly recruited prospect. You know, we've done this so many years now, and when we really do break it down by category after the state finals, after everything is said and done, it really does, we do really see the cream rise to the top. No question. There, there were two times that I can think of. We were just talking about one of them without names being yes, mentioned. Yes, exactly. Just before we started <laughs> yeah. taping. You know what yeah, I'm talking about. Exactly. And we walked into the room, and I think we all thought to ourselves, well, this is going to be easy. This is you the know, guy. But you know what? Credit be to Lauren. He sits in front of there, gets on the bulletin board, and writes down the names, and we literally go through the criteria. And when you check all those boxes, you'd be surprised to see sometimes how things figure. They aren't always as they seem. And that's why we hammer the, our criteria over your head every single year. We talk about it the first week. We talk about it the second week. We'll talk about it all year long. You'll hear about it from this point on. This is the criteria that we go by. Uh, that way, there can be no debate. There can be no argument. This is how we do it. So, um, you know, it's interesting to use an example. Like, look, okay, I, newsflash. Uh, everybody's looking at Bryce Underwood right now, right? How can you not? Um, up to this point, yeah, I'd probably sit back and say, yeah, he's probably... Uh, the favorite hold the phone when you sit down in front of the screen things can change an upset can happen somebody can have a monster game on on the biggest stage etc etc and that's why you check those boxes off because it isn't as it might appear all the time in that regard and that's why we do it exactly by that criteria absolutely and quite often it does come down to uh once we've chosen our final four there could be, a, and we've had these scenarios where there's been a state championship game and we're like, gosh, it's one against the other. It's like, how awesome is that? And really that kind of is how uh, sometimes things are determined because in the end, the criteria will fit out for the one who won the state championship. But we got a long way to go before we get there. We got a lot of really, really good games before we get there. Now we need to remind you, to, we want you to continue to vote. The voting will go on for several more weeks before we close that down and choose the final four. So right now we got to give props again out to the Caleb Osborne nation out there. Waterford Mott, you are responding. Let Caleb cook. He is leading at 38%. Uh, AJ Martell at 16%. Bryce Underwood at 12%. Des Stevens right at about 15%. So a lot of guys kind of right there battling for number two, but still ways off from being number one. We will see through the course of these playoffs, especially really over the next two weeks, where we will see some teams fall out and how that affects things. 
Well, and, you know, this is why we tell you to go out there and vote, regardless of what happens to your guy and your team. If you go out there and you have him as the leading vote getter, he's automatically into our final four. He's got a puncher's chance at getting it done. And, Lauren, I'm going to say it again. I I think the last few years has been so much fun to see how competitive this race is and to see the people mounting up. But most importantly, I, I think it really shows us all the caliber of player right now in the MHSAA. I think the talent level is as high as it's ever been. Absolutely. And we've got juniors and seniors and one sophomore sophomore. in the competition. So uh, we will see how this plays out. Please make sure you come back each and every week because uh, things are really going to get heated up and changed out. We'll talk next week about some of the performances over the first couple of weeks of playoffs as we hand out district trophies this weekend. So good luck to all the teams involved and we'll see you next week. What's up, Michigan? It's time for another State Champs Recruit Report presented by Lawrence Technological University. Hey, visit day is Saturday, November 18th. You can learn about everything that LTU has to offer and you can win great prizes. We've got some really great prizes. They're totally free that you can win. All you got to do is register and show up. Find out more at ltu.edu. Hey, every week we feature the one and only Alan True of 24-7 Sports. My name's Lauren Plant. We are recording this on Halloween, but I assure you, nothing scary in this week's segment. It's all rainbows and unicorns, right, Alan? It is, yeah. When kids are getting offers and making commitments, they're all positive things, not so frightening. Absolutely. All right. Well, as we do each and every week here uh, on the Recruit Report, we give you some of the latest and hottest recruiting news regarding high school football prospects that reside here in the state of Michigan. And no other team... Um, hotter right now than Belleville. It's all rainbows for the Tigers as they attempt to win their third state title in a row. Rashad Jones on a lot of colleges' wish lists. Yeah, and he's been since early in his career, and I think some of that foot traffic that Belleville gets because of how much talent they have and their success on the field helps that. But he's developed into an outstanding prospect in his own right. Six foot four, 240 pounds. Comes from a background of playing several different positions. He was even playing running back at the youth level before he entered Belleville High School. Now has transitioned to where I think colleges see him as a full-time defensive lineman. That athletic background makes him a good fit. He can play on the edge. He can shift around to different parts of the line. Uh, Recently picked up an offer from Michigan State. Spartans were active in offering several kids at Belleville. They join a list that recently also added Purdue and Cincinnati schools like Kentucky we're already on that. So don't expect the offer train to stop anytime soon for Rashad Jones. Yeah. Well, a trend that we've seen over the past several years is that the talent level, especially at Belleville, but especially at the quarterback position is very strong here in the state of Michigan. It seemed colleges want to get in on some signal callers very early in their career. Case in point at Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Yeah, another trend is that this 2027 class, it seems like we talk about an in-state freshman getting a major offer every week. And so the freshman quarterback at Orchard Lake St. Mary's, Javen Gonzalez, was able to pick up an offer from Bowling Green. Uh, There are some connections there. His dad played at Michigan and a lot of the staff at Bowling Green was on staff at Michigan at that time, including the head coach, Scott Leffler. But uh, beyond the connections, Javen is going to be a very highly recruited player, six foot two, athletic, already making plays on the varsity level this year, leading them to several wins during the season. And so I expect him to keep growing. I expect him to keep developing. And like I said, we have a very, very talented 2027 class in the state of Michigan and Javen, without a doubt, uh, one of the top quarterbacks in that class and one of the better athletes in that class as well. Yeah, and being in the Catholic League Central Division plays against some extremely good competition, uh, which is great for universities to judge that talent. Now, Warren De La Salle is a program that has seen its share of success over the last decade. Six state championship appearances, five state titles, including back-to-back rings. Obviously, to do that, you have to have talent. The Pilots do, including a senior defensive back heading to the Ivy League, it appears. Yeah, they've had some good DBs come through there. Most recently, guys like Josh DeBerry have gone on to college and made an impact at that level. Kandekai Sherman uh, committed recently to Cornell. I think he went under the radar just a little bit. Six foot, 190 pounds, very physical. Has run 4'6 in the 40. Obviously an outstanding student. A lot of his offers came 
from Ivy League programs. Uh, had They gave him opportunities to play at their program. So I think this is a really, really good pickup here for them. They, he goes uh, off to the Ivy League, obviously a great student, but I think on the field, a guy who can play several different positions, physical, uh, can play in the box, but has also shown that he can play in the deep part of the secondary. Right on. We appreciate uh, Alan coming on with us every week. You can follow Alan on X. Check him out at 247sports.com. All right, Alan, we'll talk to you next week. Sounds great, Lord. Thank you. All right. Thank you. What's up, Michigan? Welcome back inside the State Champ Sports Network studio. This is another update in the State Champs Anvil Award race, searching to find out who's the top linebacker or lineman in the state of Michigan. We've been doing this for years, and the coach, Tim Beckler, has been helping us for years kind of break down this competition. Uh, all season long, we've talked about the candidates. We feel we have one of the best group of candidates that we've had, uh, maybe ever. You know, it's really hard to debate, you know, each uh, particular top 10. But this one, again, has been strong. It has been. I, I really do think it's the best class we've seen since I've been doing this. Which has been several years. Yeah, uh, top to bottom. I mean, there has not been a kid you go, eh, I'm not sure if right. should be on here. Every kid that we've looked at deserved to be on this list. The tape doesn't lie. Absolutely not. Okay, what we're going to do today is kind of give you an idea of how we select our Anvil Award, and this is the same also for our Mr. Football Award. We have a criteria that was created. So number one is 30% of the criteria relates to performance throughout the season. 20% is the level of competition you're playing throughout the season. 20% goes to the online vote. What that means is when you go and vote for your candidate online, there's going to be one who has the most votes at the end of the voting competition, which will be in just a few more weeks. At the end of that, that person will automatically qualify for the final four, and they will have a 20% advantage over everybody else to win the trophy. Now, this is not a popularity competition. Very rarely does the voting winner win the actual Anvil Award. However, what it does is gives you the people an opportunity to go out there for your guy to vote for your guy get him into the final four and who knows if his team and if the criteria follow suit then he will be the winner because he has a significant advantage okay 15 percent goes to big game performance 10 percent goes to team success so overall how did the team do when it was all said and done because let's face it the guys with bullseyes on their back uh have a lot to do with you know how their team does at the end of the season and that correlates directly to highly recruited prospect we only give five percent to that particular thing but again these are the guys that have the biggest you know arrows on them in terms of what's expected from them and of course you know from uh, the people playing against them how they want to perform against them and they have a lot to live up to so that is the criteria tell me why it works well at the end of the year we you know we go into the room and uh, we hammer it all out and uh, we draw up on the board and names and we go through every criteria and uh, i feel really good every and i know you do too yeah. when we walk out of there with with that guy um, he deserves it. So that's really how it works. Uh, what we'll do moving forward here for the last several weeks is we will uh, break down some of the performance of uh, some of these candidates. Uh, I would I will tell you that the voting is still continuing. And uh, right now, uh, Liam Vaughn of Wall Lake Western is leading the vote. He has got uh, nearly 20,000 votes in the can for him right now. Uh, about a 43% uh, click uh, leading uh, Carter Herman sitting at about 30 35%, just under 16,000 votes. So those are the two going at it right now. If anybody else is going to catch them, we're going to need some serious voting to happen here over the next series of weeks. So who will win this year's Anvil? That will be determined very soon. Knock your cheeses up. Whoa. Whoa. Mac and cheese pizza? Mac and cheese pizza. That's right, the new mac and cheese pizza from Hungry Howie's. Mac and cheese, mozzarella, panko breadcrumbs, and our famous flavored crust. Only for a limited time. Hungry Howie's! 
At Alto Equipment, we know when it comes to getting your job completed on budget and on schedule, uptime matters. Alto Equipment has partnered with the biggest names in construction, including Volvo, Leboy, Senebogan, Avant, ASV, and more to provide the state of Michigan with industry-leading service and support. Alto Equipment services all makes and models, and their technicians are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Do you have a big project? Alta Rents has you covered with the most diverse rental fleet in Michigan. Give them a call at 844-GO-TO-ALTA today. Every high school sporting event in the state of Michigan has one thing in common. Officials. Every game, every meet, every match. Without officials, there'd be no touchdowns, no three-pointers, no face-offs. Without officials, there'd be no games. Officiating is a great way to give back to your community and stay involved with the sports you love. And officials are needed now more than ever because without officials, it's just practice. All right, we're back. Gross Point South High School, the site of this district final matchup. Roseville leading Gross Point South 10-0. Tight ball game, second time these two teams have played this season. Gross Point South won the first game, 16 to seven back in the third week of September. This game looks a little different though. To continue getting us prepared for the second half, back down to the sideline we go and Liz. We talked to Coach Hepner during the break, and he said, obviously, rather be up than down right now, but he said, we're right where we need to be. He said, that's within reach. He said he believes that this team really is a second half team, going to make some adjustments, come out the second half, and get this thing done. Evan? Liz, thank you. And now we get to do what we always love to do. We'll ask Grant Perry a coaching question. What adjustments are you making if you're Gross Point South? Gross Point South, you got to tighten it up inside. Right now, Desmond. Uh, Strott and, and Bryant Weathersby are running all over. you got to do your best to contain the run because uh, the pass game hasn't been efficient right now uh, for Roseville. You've been playing really well on the perimeter, covering these big receivers, these fast receivers. But you got to find, find a way to tighten down in, in between the tackles here. Maybe apply a little pressure, bring a couple blitzes, switch things up, and, and try to uh, cause some turnovers and steal some possessions. Gabe Johnson's kick fielded, kick fielded returned by Wyatt, by Wyatt Hepner. Hepner. Did get across the 25. And Gross Point South Drive will start right there. Joey Michelotti, the bell cow for many of the carries in that first half for Gross Point South. His younger brother, Charlie, also had a bunch of the carries as well. No Matthew Agnode in that first half for Gross Point South. He carried it 22 times last week. Gross Point South goes old school, right under center, and handing the ball off to the deep back. Looked like Lex Wilson, one of the linebackers on the carry. There's a new look from Gross Point South. There's a new look. They're going to have to switch it up a little bit. Lex Wilson saw 13 carries versus Utica. Uh, you know, kind of a power eye formation here, trying to switch things up offensively. Same play did not work. Michael chewed the wrap up right near the line of scrimmage. And Gross Point South again facing a third down. They're down here, you know, you get power eye the first two plays there, trying to, you know, really jam it down the middle, get some lead blockers on those linebackers that are flying around on that Roseville defense. Uh, but, you know, talking to Coach Snowden this week, head coach for Roseville, one thing he brought up was their uh, Gross Point South's ability to get into the power eye, to kind of switch things up. So you got to imagine that, that Snowden and those coaches over there had this defense ready, and it kind of shows right now as they're sitting at a two, uh, you know, a third and six here. After two power eye plays, they're sitting in a good position here to get their offense back on the field. They motion Vashawn to the far side. Lupo looking in his direction. Vashawn makes the catch. He's going nowhere. Another excellent tackle in the open field. That's Bryant Holland Snowden, the coach's son on the stop. Really good job there. They're going to go three receivers to the field. They're going to go trips to the field here. They're going to bring Vashawn here in motion, trying to create a fourth element to that field, kind of mix up the, the coverage responsibilities. But they're just sitting, Roseville's just sitting here in the zone coverage right there. And then Anthony Scott stops him. And then Bryant Holland Snowden comes in and finishes the tackle there. Gets this Roseville offense back on the field. C.J. Rosati back on the field. He's been a busy punter tonight. A couple of his punts downed inside the 20. This one drives Stroughton inside the 30. Desmond Stroughton suffocated. Excellent coverage on special teams for Gross Point South. Nice crunch and tackle by Charlie Bedsworth. Check it, that's Josh Lemansky making the tackle on special teams. 
Alta Equipment knows when it comes to getting your job completed on budget and on schedule, uptime matters. Alta Equipment partners with the biggest names in construction with industry leading service and support. Give them a call. 844 go to Alta. Another stop for a Roseville defense that has not given up a point yet in the playoffs. And now their offense is back in the field. Rose Point South came into this game defensively with the, the mindset of you know laying a goose egg and not letting Roseville score. But Roseville took that playbook and said, you know what, we're going to put that on you and we're going to try to stop you and keep you out of the end zone here. Weathers beer on and right. Slipped a couple of tackles with a flag behind the play. It's a great run on first down, but I don't think it's going to stand. There is a flag on the play. Yeah, I think they're going to get Aries, Collins, or Aries Hollins here with a little hold on the perimeter. That counter run got to the perimeter there. Usually that counter hits up inside the tackle. In that situation, uh, Cersei wasn't ready for it. Got a, you know, a little bit of a hold there on the cornerback. I wish you could see. I wish we had a GoPro on Grant during that play because, look, this is an old wide receiver who knows how hard it is to block on the outside. As soon as the flag came out, Grant throws his hands up and goes, come on, man. Yeah, yeah, and those are the hardest, right? When you think the play's going inside or away from you, and then all of a sudden that guy that you're stalk blocking, his eyes get big, and he starts trying to pick a decision, pick a way to go, and then you get into panic mode. You try to grab onto something, and then that play gets right in front of the referee, and that's an easy call for him to see. So first down and a long way to go. By the way, that's what Coach Snowden told Liz coming off the field at halftime. Long way to go and we gotta be careful, we gotta execute. Thought they had one too many penalties in that first half. And now Hollins, fresh off the hold, can't make the catch. And they go, good job here, they go double stack here into the boundary here, they go Hollins. Uh, and another receiver there in front of him, uh, kind of just trying to make the defense decide, all right, where, which one is going to go where? Hollins just stops for a quick five-yard hitch. Jordan Simmons, Sims excuse me, puts a great ball on him, outside shoulder, right on him. Uh, and Hollins just wasn't ready for the catch there. Uh, that could have been a catch and you know, a gain of, of five-plus yards there. Uh, but now they're faced with a second and long. And it's about to be second down and even longer. Ball start against the Panthers. The line to gain for Roseville is still Gross Point South 37. It's second out and a long way to go. Strawn the back with Sims in the gun. Daz is on Jordan's right. They motion Cersei, give to Strawn. Looking for a cutback lane. Not a little bit back, but not a whole heck of a lot. Still going to be third down and a mile for these Roseville Panthers. Good job there by Marcus Giaquinto. Uh, just do it, get into the ball rally, and he plays that, that, that three tech, that D lineman. Uh, does a good job. Uh, you know, Desmond Stratton, when he gets the ball, man, he gets north and south, but also can cut on a dime. And you got to be ready for the cutback there. And uh, the Gross Point South defense was. Uh, comes up with a good uh, tackle there to make this a third down and long. This defense, one of the best in the state. You don't have a third down and 17 against these guys. Gross Point South entering tonight had given up 52 points all season. Watch for the blitz here by number 33, Josh Lemansky. They like to bring him. He's one of their favorite blitzers. And keep it on the ground. Lemansky dropped back from that blitz look. And Roseville well short of the first down. Stratton on the run again, but Roseville plays it safe. You can understand the decision with how well your defense is playing tonight. Yep, and that's a good decision, right? You, know, you never know when Desmond Strong gets the ball, even on a third and 30 there, he has an opportunity to go you know, 40 yards. But good job there of keeping the pressure uh, away, you know, letting the you know, play digress, or play progress, excuse me, and then rally into the tackle. Good job getting off the field after you had that short uh, you know, drive here with your first possession, uh, getting this gross point, offense, gross point south offense back on the field. Gabe Johnson, who's made a field goal tonight, now going to punt. Left-footed kicker. Pressure was coming. He got it away. And he drives for Sean back near the 35. Vince has got ahead of Steve. Number one in blue and white. Angled out of bounds near the 50. And a flag comes in. I think they're going to get DeAndre Fordham for a late hit out of bounds.
on a night where this Gross Point South offense cannot catch a break. They just caught a break. And this is where, if you're Roseville, you gotta turn it into, you know, you can't get complacent, can't start making errors here. You got a 10-0 lead, but you, you, know, you give a little bit of life to this Gross Point South team, uh, and they're gonna run with it here. Uh, you know, Coach Snowden here for, for Roseville talked about taking the momentum away from them. Uh, and these plays right here, these last few plays out of Roseville, they're kind of giving it back. Uh, you know, they're starting in plus territory here, Gross Point South's offense. Uh, you know, really, honestly, some of the best field positions starting to drive here all night. Um, you know, so if they can capitalize here, uh, we got ourselves a really good ball game on our hands. Lupo's alone in the gun. Another pop pass to the motioning Vachon. There is just nowhere to go on the edge. Roseville's defense is like a hurricane flying to the football tonight. And they're trying to go po toss pass here, and the, the key to this is getting to the perimeter. You got to seal the defenders inside. You got to get to the edge. But right now, these defenders for for Roseville are just flying to the ball. And one guy gets there, and then he invites everyone to the party. And the guy, first guy there, was Corey Cobb. This guy's had a heck of a night. Really rallying to the football. A sure tackler. You know, quote unquote, one of their best tacklers for Coach Stone. And, uh, and it shows there, really good pursuit, kept his leverage, uh, and allowed the rest of the team to come get in on that tackle. Second down long. Sean, that guy in motion again. Lupo rolling left, keeping his eyes downfield, and finding Vashawn. One of their biggest plays of the night. Vince set down in the zone, and Gross Point South has some life. First down. Really good conversion there. Uh, really finding the targets, we're, uh, kind of a playground. It turned into, hey, we're gonna like, rush in three guys. We got a little bit of time here. O-line held up really well, and Lupo's just looking for a guy to find some open area, and that guy's Vince Vachon there. Does a fantastic job of putting that ball over that, that, that weak linebacker's head uh, and just finding a, an area to convert, moving the ball here, and now they're approaching the red zone, uh, and they got to capitalize here. Lupo dropping back again. He's taking a shot to the end zone. Richard sold the call. He got the flag. And now poor Brandon Cunningham coming up a little gimpy in the end zone. a big loss here you know Brandon Cunningham is a, an excellent player he's been having a great night defending Panthers these receivers the uh, and then Carter Richards gets up the seam there they run a little switch release Vince Vachon kind of grab, grabs everyone's attention down low Carter Richards hits the seam gets a step on Brandon Cunningham uh, Jack Lupo puts a good ball out there uh, and you're taught as a quarterback even when he's covered if you know it's going to be a PI throwing out there that no one can catch and you're going to get a flag there and they do and they move the ball even further First into Roseville's territory. Lupo throwing to the corner of the end zone. Richards couldn't bring it in. The hoops player tried to go up and snatch a rebound. And these offenses, it uh, doesn't matter where you play, as soon as you get a starter that comes out and you've got a good passing attack, you kind of circle the guy that comes in, right? Okay, you've been on the sideline all game, yeah, your, your legs aren't fresh. Let's go ahead and attack you. They call it the fish, right? You find the fish. Who's going to bite the bait? They go to try to attack Brandon Cunningham's replacement there at the boundary corner, uh, but just missed the catch. Good ball placement. Carter Richard tried to go over top uh, and couldn't haul it down. Jaden Williams now in coverage. They're looking that way again. Catch by Richards, but fresh off the bench, Jaden Williams made a strong tackle, and it's going to be third down. Good job here. They've been going deep. Uh, they attacked uh, Jaden Williams deep here, but they're going to just gonna run a little hitch here. Quick timing route. Catch Jaden Williams on his back foot, and they get the ball there before he could even drive it. Good catch. Way to move the sticks here, right? You were at a third and ten sitting there in kind of no man's land here at the 15. Now you're on the five, and you've got an opportunity to really to put one in here. Uh, you know, really, honestly, you got two downs to do it if they so choose. Lupo on third down. Throw into the end zone, incomplete. Couple of guys in the area. Jackson Rybicki, one of the men in the vicinity. And Gross Point South takes the offense on the field. They're electing for three. Good job there. Uh, you know, those tip balls, those are an offense's worst nightmare, right? That tip ball goes and it hits about three hands and you can just hope and you hold your breath that the defense doesn't come down with it. They try to go there to Parker 
uh, Rezbicki there. Uh, Parker Rezbicki is kind of that 10th personnel receiver. He's that fourth receiver in. A guy that has had good minutes this year. It's, you know, provided some good catches for them. They just couldn't come up with a completion there when they needed it. C.J. Rosati, six for seven on field goals this year. High snap, but it's put down, and that field goal is good. Rosati slipped it through the left upright, and Gross Point South on the board. 10-3, the score. You've probably heard a lot about the Michigan Wolverines football team the last couple of weeks. They're finally playing football again tomorrow night. They'll take on the Purdue Boilermakers at the big house. Did you know that Will Johnson, one of their starters on defense, played his high school football here at Gross Point South? He was on the varsity team as a freshman, which doesn't happen a lot around here, and he was outstanding on the field. We asked their coach, Wyatt Hepner, if uh, Johnson started those turnover buffs at Gross Point South. Those are the sunglasses that they put on at Michigan after every turnover, and apparently no, Grant. There were no turnover buffs at Gross Point South. They weren't in the budget, but plays like this apparently were in the budget. Heck of a player, you know, had a really good career here at Gross Point South and has shown why he was such a highly touted prospect coming out and, and you know, just gradually you know, groomed to become an elite cornerback at Michigan and is showing why he's worthy of all those stars he can't coming out. Rosati pops up a kick into the middle of the field, but the play was whistled dead. We have an uber rare full start on the kickoff. Getting very quickly back to the turnover buffs, Graham. One of my life goals is to get on the swag cam at a Pistons game. And I just think the only shot I have is if I wear some buffs. I think that is the only shot I have. Yep, some buffs or like, you know, 24 karat necklace. You gotta be glistening. The camera's gotta catch your eye, right? You can't just be wearing you know, your polo. You, know, <laughs> you would be on the swag cam if they could see your shoes. That's I'll true. tell you that, your shoe game is second to none. Thanks, buddy. But yeah, I just, look, I don't know if I can rock a chain. I, I just don't know if I can do it. And when I'm not working, I'm usually just wearing like a hoodie or something. Rosati tried to pop the kick off again, didn't work. This time it's out of bounds. And this means solid field position is on the way for Roseville. Man, this is one of those curious areas of a ball game, right? 5.41 to go, just about half of the third quarter remaining. Roseville's got the lead. I think anyone who's watched this entire game with us would agree that Roseville has commanded much of the play, but this is very much still a dogfight. Yeah, we're in a dogfight right now, and, you know, going back to the first half there, you know, Roseville had an opportunity. They had a touchdown called back on a hold. Uh, they also were in the red zone uh, and attempted two fourth down, uh, you know, tries there and had uh, unsuccessfully, uh, you know, came out of there uh, with two turnover on down. So they've had opportunities. And when you get into this stretch of the playoffs, good teams convert, and they got to become a good team right here on these fourth downs. That wasn't a good play for Roseville. The ball's still free. Oh, my goodness. Josh Lemansky has got it, and we've got a new football game. And talk about a momentum shift. We are just talking about good teams convert. But good teams also get the handoff to their playmakers here, and it just is a simple mistake here. Didn't look the ball in, tries to jump on it, but you got to understand when that D line's coming, you got to get on it. You can't try to catch it or try, try, excuse me, try to pick it up and then run with it. Then Josh Lemansky, the junior captain, comes up with the scoop and score, and that couldn't have come at a better time, Evan. Give credit as well to Lex Wilson on that play, who jarred it free when Roseville tried to pick it up. We are an extra point away from a tie game. And all I'm thinking about right now is what Coach Snowden for Roseville told Liz at halftime. We still gotta keep playing. We gotta stay mentally sound and sharp. If the boys didn't listen to him at halftime, with the way this half has started, they gotta be listening to him now. Yeah, and, and you gotta put up all your red flares here. You gotta you know, take a step back and understand you know, what Coach was saying was right at halftime, right? You had a 10-3 lead going into half, but you're facing a great team that, that is back-to-back -back Mac White champions. I mean, these guys are here for a reason. They proved success. They're 9-1 on the season right now, and you can't afford to let them get back into the ball game here, and they just did. And right now, we have a totally different ball game here. Uh, you know, pending this extra point, uh, we got a tie game here and couldn't ask for a better game so far. Second time these teams have squared off this year. A district championship is on the line. 
And if C.J. Rosati can knock through this extra point, it's 10 all. Good snap and hold, and we indeed are tied. Josh Lemansky with the scoop and the score. They call number 33 in blue and white the spiritual leader of the team. And that team is fired up right now. And if I'm this Roseville offense, uh, you know, and I'm Coach Snowden, and I'm these offensive coaches, you know, I kind of trying to look back at what's been working so far. Uh, and, and right now, you've had some attempts on the outside passing, uh, but you know, guys like Noah Hart and Henry you know, Domazowski and, and Wyatt Hepner are kind of locking that down, doing a really good job back there, you know, playing sound football in the pass game. Uh, but your old line and your running backs are the are the group that you talking to them this week said you know, they've been the most pleased with so far this season, and they've been doing the, the you know the best job. And right now, you know, the first half they did carry you know most of the weight. I'd get back to them. I'd let them carry the load. That's safe. That's efficient. You know, the toss pass, you know, that's just kind of, you know, that's reps, and that's just a bad mental mistake there. But I'd start getting it back to Bryant Weathersby and Desmond Stratton, letting those guys run, try to break a big one here, try to take back some of this momentum that this home crowd now has. It's a great crowd here tonight. Student section full, great community support. They didn't have uh, many chances to cheer in the first half. They're wide awake now. Rosati booms the kick. And Roseville on the return. Hoping for a spark. They may have it here. Holland's on the return. Right near the 35. Roseville offense. All but one drive in the first half. They got into Gross Point South territory. But just the 10 points. Hindsight is such a thing as 2020. But if you're Roseville sitting here now going, Man, we wasted some shots in the first half to really give ourselves some breathing room. Yeah, and it all goes back to what Coach Snowden said, right? we got to play a complete game. They have felt like throughout the season they've played two-thirds of a game, you know, one-third of a game where offense is playing well, defense is playing well, but they haven't put it all together. And right now, the second half, you got to put it all together. Here's Stratton. Usually a darn good idea to give that dude the ball. He dives across the 40-yard line and makes it a second down and manageable for Roseville. Just keep in mind as well, the winner of this game gets the winner of this game, a good old school Catholic League game between De La Salle and UAD. De La Salle leading UAD Jesuit 18 to nothing, that ball game in the third quarter. Frank Gallagher in the tackle there. Second down three. The right back to Stratton. Slowed up, stayed on his feet, turned a negative into a positive. That is a first down for Roseville when it looked like Stratton was going down in the backfield. Yeah, and it looked like Sean DeGrand here, number 30, the defensive end, had him deads to rights here, but just comes up. You know, Stratton is running hard. Look at these legs still turning, still moving, staying low, ducking tackles. I mean, that's called second effort, and he's been providing it all night. And if I'm these coaches over there on that sideline, that visitor sideline, I'd keep feeding him, man. He, you know, he's just showing you not one reason why not to give him the ball. He's running hard, him and Bryant Weathersby. Uh, let them lead you to the promised land there. Great pick up there. Uh, on that conversion. Two backs with Sims in the shotgun. Weathers be on the left, Stratton on the right. I also have Scott, the tight end, on the right side of the formation. Roseville will burn a timeout. With just over four minutes to go in a third quarter that has been dominated by Gross Point South. Speaking of the Blue Devils, let's go back when Gross Point South secured their last district championship. Believe it or not, it's been since 2016 since these guys won one. They took a 24 to 14 victory over the Crosstown rivals, Gross Point North. Last time that South has won a district championship. Trying to win their first district title since 2016. At halftime, you wondered if Gross Point South would think as positively about that fact with four minutes to go in the third. But a scoop and score on D and a field goal deep in Roseville's territory on offense has made this a brand new ball game. Same formation for Roseville as before the timeout. 
It's right back to Desmond Stratton, who is stonewalled right near the line of scrimmage. Well, that's the recipe, Grant. Give Des Stratton the football. Yeah, yeah, that's the recipe for sure. And right now, Roseville has a chance to right their wrongs. Last game they played this season, Gross Point South won due to a blocked field goal for a touchdown. And kind of the same story unfolding right now, right? Gross Point South's offense hasn't got the ball moving. They needed a spark. They found it on that fumble for a touchdown. And Roseville right now can start flipping the switch from that last game and start saying, you know what, we're going to change the narrative here. We're going to run the ball. We're going to succeed, get these first downs, and keep the chains moving. But right now, uh, Roseville's offense is a little bit of a stutter. they got to get some momentum here and get the ball down in Gross Point territory. Weathersby again. Nothing again. That Gross Point South defense is coming up big at the right time. Yeah, first guy in on that tackle, Lex Wilson. A guy that just is, flies around. Only 5'8", 185, but plays like 6'2", 220. I mean, two-year starter for this, for this defense here. You know, three games this year with 10-plus tackles. This guy flies around, and he's got a nose for the football. Really good job to make this a third down and 10. Sims on this long third down. Rolling right. Keeping his eyes downfield. He'll tuck, run, and come up short. Hepner flew up from the secondary to make the stop. About a yard shy of the first down. And now Roseville has to decide what to do. Be interesting to see what they do. They did cross into Rose Point South territory there with that QB scramble. Um, looking about a foot short here. Uh, and you'd love Jordan Sims here to just, you know, kind of understand the situational awareness, spatial awareness, if you will. This is now the second time on a scramble that he's found himself kind of stopping short just to that first down, that line to gain. In that situation, he's a great runner, great athlete. I like to see him put his feet in the ground. Wyatt Hepner is running full speed. I like to see him putting his feet in the ground and cut back, try to get that tough one yard, give yourself another four downs to work with. The Panthers lined up to go for it. That's what they're doing. Desmond Stratton did not get it. This gross point South defense is a stone wall in the second half. Looks like we might have a flag on the play. Let's see what it's on. But really good job here by this, this, uh, this Gross Point South defense. Again, Lex Wilson finding gaps, shooting the gaps, hitting it at 100 miles per hour. And Desmond Stratton is not an easy guy to tackle. But when you're going against Lex Wilson, if he gets so much as a leg, man, he's going to bring you down. Oh, my goodness. A face mask on Gross Point South has given Roseville the first down. And I'd have to get another look because... When initially the wrap-up happened, there was no face mask that I saw. Yeah, and if you're Gross Point South, you're, you're demanding a number. What number is it? You know, who did it? You know, trying to figure out, put the pieces together there. Uh, you know, your Roseville here, that's a blessing. you got to use that to your advantage. If you're Gross Point South, keep doing what you're doing. Keep flying, keep filling gaps, uh, and shutting down this run game. Roseville catches a massive break. Weathersby, maybe a yard. Franklin Gallagher, that defensive end, 13 tackles on the season, three sacks, three TFLs, finding a way to get his name in this game. Does a good job holding that edge. It's inside zone, it's gonna be going right inside of him, but he holds the edge, gets inside, makes a tackle for no game. Coming down the wire in the third quarter, a pivotal drive. Coach Bernard Snowden in his fifth year leading Roseville has steely eyes of determination right now. Play action for Sims. Down the field, he's got an open man. That's Hollins for a touchdown. What a time for the first touchdown of the year for the senior, Ari Hollins. Ari Hollins, this is a great throw and catch. They're in a too high look here. The safety was just a tad late. Damoski, just a tad late getting over top. Looked like they were in a cover two look there. Lucas Ogden is, you know, responsible for that flat, anything underneath. And Hollins inside releases it, gets upfield, beats him with speed. And Jordan Sims finds him there for a completion and a huge strike here in this third quarter to regain the lead. A first down granted to Roseville on a face mask call by Gross Point South, and Roseville takes advantage. Johnson knocks in the extra point. Jordan Sims just threw his 20th touchdown of the season, and Roseville is back in front. 
Says a lot about him, right? Gross Point South comes out of the locker room, rolling the first 10. Roseville on the last drive, fumbles it. Gross Point South picks it up and scores. Yes, they got a break. They got a face mask when they were stopped short, but still, good teams take advantage of breaks like that. Yeah, they do, and especially here late in the playoffs, you know, when something's not working, uh, you know, they've been kind of containing Weathersby and Stroughton here in this second half, uh, run game-wise. you got to find another player, another facet to really take you to the next level here, and Jordan Sims, you know, kind of been quiet night throwing-wise, but steps up, throws a beam right past the safety, right over the top of the corner's head, uh, and lands right in the basket uh, for Hollins there to score. Really good conversion there, and like you said, I mean, good teams take advantage of those opportunities, and that's a good job there by Roseville. Feels like we have a classic brewing at Gross Point South on this early November Friday night. Johnson boots it away. Hefner on the return. He starts right near his five. Stays on his feet and then falls down right around the 25. Parker had the first hit and then he was slowed up. This Gross Point South offense, Grant, just had their best drive of the ball game. They got inside the 10 yard line, but they stalled and had to settle for three. What's the mindset on this drive? You know, kind of keep coming back to it. I like to see them get Hunter Balaj involved, their big tight end number 88. You know, he's really effective over the middle when that quick game, right? That, the pressure from the D line of Roseville is, a, you know, really causing havoc there. So you got to have fast throws. I like to see Hunter Delage there get, you know, get involved. But also Brandon Cunningham's back in, he's milking a little bit of a hamstring on that last drive. May, might try to go deep and see, you know, and test that hamstring strength here. They start with the run. This is Joey Michelotti. We've seen both Michelottis today, Michelotti Joey and Charlie. That time Joey gains a couple on first down. And, but another thing, you know, Joey Michelotti, when he touches the ball too, he's getting positive yards. I mean, that was a gain of two there. Uh, but, you know, some other runs there, he's really good in tight spaces. The feet keep driving. He runs hard. Uh, you know, one of their best, you know, running backs here coming into tonight, as we haven't seen Matt Agnow. Not sure, you know, what's going on with him. But, you know, Joey McLeod is going to have to kind of carry this load here this second half and, and pick up these hard yards on these, uh, you know, crucial downs. McLeod again. Our real estate this time. Trudging his way across the 30. Up to the 34. Third down, a long one coming up for Gross Point South. It's a good job. It's called riding the wave there. You got a lineman, a blocker out in front, kind of leading the way. Instead of you know just deciding, hey, I'm going to go left of him or right of him, kind of just ride it. Let him decide. When he makes a block, then you cut off of it. It's a great pickup there, making this a third down and one. I haven't been in too many third down and one situations here if you're Gross Point South, uh, but the ability to open up the playbook here is extraordinary, uh, and they need a conversion right now. Let's see if they snap it one more time before the quarter clock ends. They will. Lupo gives. Michelotti's got the first down. Lowered that left shoulder, kept the drive alive, and Gross Point South is alive as we start the fourth quarter. Don't go anywhere. This is a great one of the district championship. Roseville, Gross Point South trading punches. Gross Point South trying to tie it back up when we start the fourth after this. Mac and cheese is up. Mac and cheese pizza? Mac and cheese pizza. That's right, the new mac and cheese pizza from Hungry Howie's. Mac and cheese, mozzarella, panko breadcrumbs, and our famous flavored crust. Only for a limited time. Hungry Howie's! At Alto Equipment, we know when it comes to getting your job completed on budget and on schedule, uptime matters. Alto Equipment has partnered with the biggest names in construction, including Volvo, Leboy, Bogan, Avant, ASV, and more to provide the state of Michigan with industry-leading service and support. Alto Equipment services all makes and models, and their technicians are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Do you have a big project? Alta Rents has you covered with the most diverse rental fleet in Michigan. Give them a call at 844-GO-TO-ALTA today. Every high school sporting event in the state of Michigan has one thing in common, officials. Every game, every meet, every match. Without officials, there'd be no touchdowns, no three-pointers, no face-offs. 
Without officials, there'd be no games. Officiating is a great way to give back to your community and stay involved with the sports you love. And officials are needed now more than ever because without officials, it's just practice. Hey guys, welcome back. You see that drum on the Roseville sidelines? Well, Coach Snowden loved the idea from Cincinnati and decided to bring one home to Roseville. And now it's a tradition after every score, the guys play that drum, br drum bringing the energy up. And we've heard it already a couple times tonight. Evan? Liz, I'd say that's the biggest drum in the state of Michigan, but Purdue is playing at the University of Michigan tomorrow. I, I heard a rumor they also have a big drum. Did you ever play at Purdue when you were at U of M? I did, yep. Um, Oh, what year was it? I believe it was 2017. Uh, we won in a close fashion. Quarterback Whitten Spate got injured. John O'Corn came in. Uh, it was a really tough game, but we uh, grinded it out and got the win over there. That was a fun place to play as well. Michelotti on the run. Joey Michelotti with a lot of room. Number four to foot race. He is losing the football. They say he was down. He was down at the one yard line. And talk about an explosive play here. A lot to go over here. A little toss, pet, toss pitch, and he just hits the hole running. I mean, gets to the second and third level and just starts beating everybody. But the linebacker, Elijah Parker, hawks him down a little bit, and we're going to have to see if he was down from up here. Really good job, and it looks like that ball was coming out. Not sure if he regained possession there. Great hustle by Elijah Parker, but a really good run there uh, by Michelotti, uh, really bringing this offense back to life. Gross Point South fans watching are going, you know what? On the last drive, they called a face mask on us. Roseville got a free first down and scored. We are not complaining about the fact that on replay, he was not down. That was a fumble. Yeah, that ball was definitely coming loose there. Uh, and you got to put a star next to Elijah Parker there for that hustle play that won't get noted uh, in the stats after today. Is that Jalen Hurts or Jack Lupo? Gross Point South back into the end zone. And back and forth we go and what's turning into a classic. Just like you said, we don't know if it's Jalen Hurts or if it's Jack Lupo, but it's the same concept here. Just a quarterback sneak. They got two guys, two big boys pushing them in there, and that play, when ran correctly, is basically unstoppable, as you can see them crossing the goal line right there. Gross Point South student section loving it. Fifth touchdown on the ground this year for Lupo. And now Rosati trying to tie the game back up. The extra point once again, good. Fourteen seconds into the fourth quarter, and we have a new football game all over again. Now this is going to be a good one. It's going to come down to a good finish. It's going to come down to who can you know possess the ball, you know convert some third downs, some fourth downs here, not turn the ball over. Um, you know, this is getting down to the nitty gritty here. Uh, and, you know, both teams here got to kind of collect each other, play their best ball, try to play, mis you know, mistake free football, and see who comes out with it here for this district final. Uh, should be a good one. Student section having fun. This is one of those nights, win or lose, that you will remember when you start getting old, fat, and gray. Brent and I aren't old, fat, and gray yet, but we do remember nights like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, not there yet. Uh, we might have ticked some people off here next to us, but nonetheless, man, we're all here enjoying football here, and, and this is a game that's going to go down as, as a really good one here. I, I mean, wasn't both saying anyone in the student section or in this press box was old, fat, and gray. It's just a turn of phrase. I have to buy everyone some food after the game to make everybody happy. What the heck, man? Roseville on the return. This is Herman Searcy with room. Cersei with a jolt for Roseville. And the visitors are going to get good starting field position. Really good job here playing all three phases. I mean, you catch the ball in the 20, you got to progress that ball here. And a really good job by Cersei at getting as many yards as he can, getting up the field here and making this, you know, a very manageable area to work with here. You're, you're about five yards short of crossing into Gross Point territory, a place where Roseville can operate and run what they want to run. Last time... They scored on a touchdown pass from Sims to Hollins. Roseville looked like they were stopped short on a fourth down, but Gross Point South was called for a face mask. They kept the drive alive, and then Roseville scored two plays later.
These two teams met in September, and Grosse Point South won 16 to seven. In that game, they had a block punt for a touchdown. In this game, they have a fumble return for a touchdown. We kind of figured this thing would come right down to the wire. Weathers be the back with Jordan Sims. They motion Stratton and fake it to him. Sims dropping back, going down the field. He's got his big target. Eric Slater, his That's first catch of the Eric night. Slater. He's down. Hope he's all right. This heck of a catch. Heck of a catch. And these tough catches, when you come down with it, regardless of how you feel after, I mean, that's just a job well done here. They're going to go on a double post with a little bit of a wheel by the motion man. Eric Slater goes up for it. The big number seven, six three body, uh, you know, goes up for the big catch there. Catches it, puts them in the red zone area. Uh, hope he's okay. He's a big player on this team. Uh, you know, a vital piece to this passing game. Uh, it looks like he probably got, you know, landed on his shoulder, maybe that collarbone area. I won't speculate on what it is, but just hope that he, you know, finds a way to get up, get back in this game, uh, and isn't too serious. Eric Slater, a guy who's got a lot of great football to play in his future. All the MAC schools in this state, Eastern, Central, Western have offered him. The Indiana Hoosiers have offered him. Just made a great catch. I hope he's all right. We'll hit a break and come on back and give you an update on Slater if we can. Welcome state champs women. Is it your dream to play your favorite sport in college? State champs women is dedicated to providing females the equal coverage they deserve while bringing awareness to the gaps in the recruiting process for women. We want you to build a recruiting profile with us. In three easy steps, you can be on your way to finding your dream school and lifelong teammates and friends. Connecting futures, unlocking potential. We are state champs women. Good news, Eric Slater leaving the field under his own power. You hope for the best for Eric, who just made an excellent catch. The last two plays for Roseville. Jordan Sims touchdown pass. Jordan Sims deep pass to Slater. Roseville right back in business. Yep, as the run game kind of gets shut down a little bit, they start keying in on those running backs. Someone's got to step up. And Jordan Sims right now is throwing dimes all across the field, making big plays, helping this team gain momentum back. Des Stratton right. Good gain again. Lowering that shoulder into the teeth of the Gross Point South defense. They've only given up 52 points all year. Tonight, Roseville has found a few cracks. Yep, they have, and you know that goes with playing a team twice in a year. It's never easy to beat a team twice, as the other team that has lost that game comes back with a chip on their shoulder, hungry, ready to go, and, and they already have a game plan, right? They already have film on you. They played against you. They know your players. So right now, Roseville's kind of executing on this drive, and they got the formula right now to see if they can put it in. Well, there's B running, cutting up the middle. He's got the first out. Scored the first Brian touchdown Leonard of the night for Roseville, the and they're knocking on the door again. And and Weathersby, a really good prospect here. I mean, committed to Northwood, uh, does a fantastic job. When he gets in that hole, man, those legs start pumping. You know, those little ankle tackles don't bother him. He drives through those arms, does a good job. It takes about two to three guys to tackle him, um, and he does a fantastic job there of running through the contact. Most guys will stop, most guys will go down, afraid the ball's gonna get knocked out. Not Weathersby, man, he's running hard. And uh, you know, when the run game isn't there, someone's gotta step up. Jordan Sims is doing his part. Brother, uh, and Weathersby saying, hey, you know what? I can still run this thing too. They give it back to him. Number 20, staying low to the ground. They mark him short on forward progress. Second down and goal. Good job there. The closer you get to that goal line area, the harder it is, you know, the, the, the field shrinkens. You know, the cornerbacks and the safeties can play up. They don't got to worry about getting beat over top. The linebackers are playing on the tips of their toes. The D-line's got their hand down, you know, ready to go. Uh, good job there by that left side of that D-line. Jake Kozell and Andrew uh, Pazahowski uh, doing a fantastic job of holding down their side. Stratton now the back. Slowed up and stopped in the backfield. Andrew Pazahowski again at defensive line. Stiffening at the right time. Fantastic job. They're trying to get outside the tackle here. They're running a little counter, but the linebacker, the captain, Josh Lemansky, just shoots the gap. Says, you can't block me. I'm going to get in there. I'm the captain. I'm the spiritual leader of this team. I'm going to will my way into that backfield. Really good job. And that's not an easy guy to tackle in Desmond Stroughton. Uh, so he grabs that leg and he holds on for dear life. Makes this a hard third down and goal. Sims with time. Now rolling right. 
floating it into the end zone. That's a touchdown. Anthony Scott, his first of the season, gives Roseville the lead in the district final in the fourth quarter. And you can hear a pin drop right now. The crowd just got quieted so much. I mean, but they just slipped the tight end out. No one accounts for him. It looks like the play isn't going to be there, but Jordan Sims keeps the play alive. And then Anthony Scott finds a little nook in the back of the end zone, keeps those toes in bounds, extends for the ball, comes down with a huge catch. And like you said, his first touchdown of the year couldn't come at a better time. As other guys go down, Slater goes down, run game's not there, guy's got to step up. Anthony Scott puts his name in the hat. Gabe Johnson, a busy man tonight, adds the extra point. Anthony Scott got both his feet in. That would have been good on Sundays. This is a football game worthy of Sundays. What a second half this has turned into. Roseville was up 10-0 at recess. Then it was 10-10. Then Roseville scored 17-10. And Gross Point South scored 17-17. And now Roseville is back in front, but there is still a long way to go in this ball game. Long way to go. And as this second half starts, you know, getting down and, and the clock gets you know, lower and lower, I mean, the plays are just popping off. I mean, we got long conversions, long touchdowns, long runs, some questionable calls on both sides, you know, some, some bailouts and, you know, whatnot. But this is the district final. I mean, anything can happen. And right now, if you're Roseville, you got a key on the run right now. Uh, you know, Joe Michelotti, you know, just – Gave you a dagger on that last drive. The pass game hasn't really been there for Gross Point South. So if you're Roseville, you got to really key in on that run, that run game. Fit the run well. You know, stay in your gap, and then let the cornerbacks and the safeties do the pass coverage there. And you know, but if you're Gross Point South, got to find a way to have another big play, another big drive here. Um, and you, you know, as both coaches here, you know, the time winding down, they're keeping count of how many timeouts and how much time's left here. You know, the clock's going to be a big factor at this close of a game. Johnson, another kickoff. Gross Point South elects to let it roll into the end zone. And this drive going to start for the Blue Devils at the 20. Hungry Howie is a great partner of the State Champs Network's Mr. Football and Anvil Awards. Congrats to Hungry Howie's on 50 years of the best flavored crust pizza. Order your, hung order your pizza right now at HungryHowie's.com. I mean, you got all three timeouts of your Gross Point South. Nine minutes to go, just about. The entire playbook is open. And give them credit, last couple of drives, they've marched right down the field. Yeah, they've done a fantastic job. Um, you know, even when the pass game doesn't necessarily find its way, they've been finding ways to run this ball, finding numbers in the run game. Let's see if they can get back to that. Different looking play here. They hand to one of the up men, but not very much. That was Jack Kendall on the short run, just his 14th of the season, and he maybe gained a yard and a half. Jack, Jack Kendall's Kendall. that typical, that, that that big fullback that's going to lead the way for the running backs. But you got to give everyone a little touch here and there. And, you know, they were trying to catch the D-line off guard, give a little bit of fullback inside dive. Uh, but the D-line swarmed to that, swallowed that up uh, for a gain of only two. Michelotti, the running back with Lupo. Joey had the big run in the last drive, which set up Gross Point South. They pitch it to him. And this time he cuts back right into... A wall. Corey Cobb has just been all over this football field tonight. All over the place. And that was the play that, that Joe Michelotti had that big 60-yard run to get them to the one-yard line on. That little toss pitch, trying to get leverage on the outside. But when you got a guy in Corey Cobb who's a senior, and out of his three years on varsity, has recorded 100-plus tackles in two out of those three years, I mean, the guy can tackle, man. And he just flew up, made a great form tackle uh, for a gain of, of nothing. The Roseville coaching staff told us this week, Corey knows everything. If something happened, he could probably also be the defensive coordinator. And after tonight, I believe him. Third down and eight. Lupo alone in the gun. Jack's got the time. He's throwing a fastball to the far side. That is caught by Vashawn right near the sticks. Excellent job. Sat down, got the first down, I beg your pardon. That was number three on the catch. Sam. Raparata, his first catch of the night, moved the sticks. Really good job here. And when you give Lupo time, I mean, he can throw. He can dice you up. He's a great quarterback when he's got time and he can set his feet and make throws, especially when presented with some, some zone coverage, right, some open zone holes in that, that area, especially in between those linebackers. Really good job of finding that open area, settling down. And great catch by Sam Craparata uh, there, uh, converting and get, making this a first down. 
Lupo, a designed run for the first time tonight. That was a change up that worked. Anthony Scott made the tackle, but Lupo, a darn good gain on first down, six yards. Really good gain. Looks like his helmet might have come off, so you know they got to get someone in here, uh, you know, to, to get a little bit of a breather there. And you know, one play when the helmet comes off, um, that's the rule here in high school football. Uh, but really good run, like you said, they kind of reached down in their bag there, went with a different type of run scheme, and uh, picked up a good gain of seven there. This is Sam Rouleau, the freshman. If you had told Sam before the game, hey, you're going to play tonight in the fourth quarter, he'd probably go, I am? How much are we winning by, right? I mean. Right. And they're going to start Sam alone in the gun. How about this confidence? It's a designed run, and the freshman leans ahead for a first down. One play. Good job, Sam. Great job. That just shows you how well coached these guys are. I mean, you know, a quarterback that's been sitting on the bench all, you know, all game, you know, kind of just watching the game as it goes. You know, a freshman, like you said, Evan, uh, does a fantastic job of getting in that game, strapping on his helmet. There was no hesitation on him running on the field, man. It looked like he was ready to go, and they give him the call. They said, you know what, we're going to put the ball in your hands, make something happen. He does. He picks up that conversion. They got a new set of downs here. Lupo's back on the field. Sam's moment of glory was just that, a moment. Lupo now rolling left, floating it down the field, and Richards dropped the ball. And that's tough. It hit the hands. Uh, another receiver down here in Carter Richards. Hopefully he's okay. Uh, looks like there's going to be some medical attention running out there. Um, great. We call that a honey hole shot, though. Uh, right in between the corner, right in between the safety. Kind of how Jordan Sims threw that touchdown to, to Hollins there. Uh, you know, that honey hole is that cover two beater. Really good job, but, you know, unfortunately didn't come down with a catch. But, you know, let's hope that he's okay. Let's hope that he can get up, get back in this game, and it's nothing too serious. As they look at Richards, we'll take a break and come on back after this. Did you know you can reach a large family audience through high school athletics? State Champs Network has recorded the journey of high school student athletes for over 20 years. The successful Game Time Live during football season is sold out. Opportunities are now available for the winter sports season, including Game Time Live for boys and girls basketball, hockey, and possibly cheerleading. Are you interested in getting your brand in front of a passionate and targeted audience? Please reach out to John Watson from our sales team for more information at jwatson at statechampsnetwork.com. Carter Richards coming off the field after that last incomplete pass. Carter's an awesome hoops player. Scored over 20 a game last year for the Blue Devil basketball team. And his dad, Kevin, coaches the women's team here at Gross Point South. Carter actually only started playing football in high school, which is hard to believe when you look at that frame. Big frame. I mean, and the hoops background gives him a great advantage in basketball. As you can see, he can go up, make catches where, you know, the defenders can't necessarily get. Um, you know, in that situation there, uh, you know, I, like, I bet he would like to have that one back. Um, but he got up on his own power, uh, so hopefully he's going to be okay. So now we turn our attention to a second down and 10 for Gross Point South. Just over halfway into the fourth quarter in this excellent Division II district final. Lupo, Belanger, the big tight end. His first catch of the night is a darn good one. 6-2, 230, and a first down for Gross Point South. Great catch here. They're going to spread them out. They're going to go empty set, right? They're going to you know, make Roseville show them their hand. And they finally get it to the big tight end, Hunter Belanger. Uh, and talking to Coach, uh, Hepner this week, he said, you know, Balaje, it seems like any catch he makes, it's a big conversion. It's a big chain mover. He's got that big rock type body, big frame, and he's open when he's not open. Uh, that's kind of how big he is. Uh, great hands on the catch. It was a contested one. Linebacker came in, tried to swat it, held on to it, moved his feet, got a first down. Uh, good to see his name get called. Good to see him get a catch. And he got this crowd going a little bit right there. Seasons on the line for both of these teams. That'll get your heart racing. Coming up on five minutes to go. Snap to Lupa. Jack's got the time. Throwing down the field. Pass is incomplete. And they will not throw the flag. They were hoping for another Michelotti, James. So we've seen James, Joey, and Charlie. Are there any other Michelottis that we haven't heard of yet? I mean, we're going to find out because, you know, they could use all the Michelottis they can get. I mean, those, you know, this trio of brothers play really good football. Um, you know, Joey leading the helm, the oldest there. 
Uh, and, and I think Hank, uh, you know, excuse me, Hank Lynn Ellison got away with a little bit of a tug there. Uh, kept it tight to the body and maybe a little bit of a, uh, you know, a, a hold. Uh, but refs didn't see it there, uh, and they get away with no call. Um, and sitting them up for a second and ten here. Another Michelotti back in. That's Charlie behind Lupo in the gun. The freshman, fresh up from JV. He's protecting for Lupo, who steps up in a clean pocket. Gets away from the first man. Scott got him right around the 40, but a wise decision for Lupo to tuck and run. It's going to be a third down and short. Really good job by Lupo there, understanding that you know it's not zone coverage anymore. Everyone's getting you know guarded. Everyone's running with a guy, so he takes off and runs. Tries to pick it up with, the, uh, with his feet. Uh, Elijah Parker comes in to make a tackle. He jumps inside, makes a great cut, uh, picks up even more yards, makes this a third down and two, an area where they can really succeed here. All right to Charlie, wrapped up. Initial spot says he's short. Miles Sharp, one of his first tackles of the night. And it is fourth down for Gross Point South. Miles Sharp, the sophomore here. And it looks like they're going to bring in that big personnel. You love to call it here. They're going to go with the Hurts push here, the brotherly, the brotherly love push. Uh, let's see if they can get it going here. Let's see if they're ex as successful as the Philadelphia Eagles are at that play. They've already run the brotherly shove push for a touchdown tonight. They're trying to get a first down here. Lupo under center, lowering his body. Awfully close. Lupo. Trying to burrow his way like a badger ahead for that first down. And it is indeed a first down for Gross Point South. They're going to keep heavy package here on the field. See what they go with here. They might try to counter off this. Uh, Eagles did counter off it eventually, and they do. That's a give to the big Wilson. Lex also plays some linebacker for Gross Point South. That's his fourth carry of the second half. They're going to try to. Sorry, go ahead. Nope. Oh, Gross Point South moving real quickly here, Grant. And I think they caught Roseville in a substitution, unless Roseville got a timeout, which they did. Really good job. Sorry to cut you off there, but I was seeing what was going on there in. in, in Gross Point South tried to play the, the, the substitution game there. They kept the big guys on the field. They had an advantage over the smaller type bodies on, on Roosevelt's defense, uh, and they made Roosevelt burn a timeout here late in this uh, fourth quarter. Great district final game tonight, and our next Game Time Live broadcast next Friday, the 10th at 7 o'clock, for a regional championship matchup that will be determined after whatever happens throughout this weekend. The announcement comes on Monday on the State Champs social media channels. The game's available to watch on MHSA.TV, and of course, on 760 WJR. That's where you can listen to the broadcast. I know there's a few folks listening to the game tonight, wherever you may be. Thanks for tuning in on 760. Evan, Grant, Liz, alongside the rest of our outstanding crew. Fans, don't forget to stick around. We're watching an outstanding football game. 326 to go in the fourth quarter. Gross Point South down by a touchdown. They have a second down and six in Roseville territory at the 33. They pitch it to Wilson left. The big lumbering part-time running back wrapped up in the open field, shy of the first down. Eubank makes the tackle, and once again, Rose Point South quickly to the line. And there's a Roseville player down. Jacob Blair, the junior, is down. And you can see a shift in, in offensive, you know, strategy here as, you know, the, the brotherly shove worked and, and they're going to stick into this heavy package as they got big bodies blocking on these smaller bodies, you know, getting positive yardage. I mean, I'd keep running it too. Uh, they go ahead and give, uh, you know, their, their linebacker there, uh, Lex Wilson, a, a toss pitch, gets to the edge. Uh, got to give Houston Eubank credit. Uh, you know, that's not an easy guy to tackle. Linebacker rolling with the football. But when you get you know, met with another linebacker, that's, a, you know, that's a collision right there. Brings him down, leaves it at a third and two here. I'd be interested to see. I think the heavy package is still out there. You know, probably just going to run that power game. But keep your eyes out for maybe a little play action pass here to keep you know, you know try to catch him sleeping, uh, try to get into that end zone here and tie this game up. Let's keep an eye on the clock too. By the way, Rhodesville just one timeout. Gross Point South all three. 3:14 to go. With the way that Gross Point South is operating on this drive, they're kind of going for broke on this drive. 
Yeah. You know, if you're Roseville here, you got to hope that you either, you know, if they do score, you have some time left to try to get down there and get a field goal, or, you know, you got to just try to keep them out of the end zone here. But, you know, Roseville is up a touchdown. Uh, Gross Point South, you know, hoping that they're going to have to force their hand in calling timeouts. Um, you just got to hope that those timeouts that they burned here in this fourth quarter don't come back to bite them. Lupo under center. This time they give to Wilson. There's a flag. It's on Gross Point South. And that turns a third down and two into a third down and seven. Yeah, and, and as you can see, the receivers are coming back on the field. That heavy package, you know, isn't built for that third down and, and medium area. Uh, it's more of a short yardage uh, type of, uh, you know, personnel. So they're going to have to, you know, try to get some, some crucial yards here. And without a doubt, you know, this is a two-down territory if you're – if you're Gross Point South. Um, so uh, with that in mind, as a play caller, you have the option, too. You don't have to go for it deep right here. You don't have to try to pick up you know, all the yards. You can try to pick up three, four, five, and make this a two-play uh, two possession right here uh, to you know, help yourself get down the field. Lupo alone in the shotgun. Another flag. In 30 seconds of real time, a third down and two for Gross Point South has turned into a third down and 12. Yeah, and as that yardage backs up, that play call sheet gets a little bit smaller each time with each yard, right? Because it gets harder. You know, third down and, and 12 is, is a hard yardage to manage. You know, you were at third and six, third and seven there uh, with the opportunity to make it a two play. Uh, you know, pick up three or four yards. You're sitting at a good fourth and two, fourth and three. Right now, you're going to have to try to pick up six, seven yards to make this a fourth down and manageable here. And the crowd is on their feet as they know this is a huge play right now. Snap back to Lupo. Rolling right. Looking down the middle, tipped it incomplete. Hoping for the big tight end, Bellage. Anthony Scott in coverage. And a pivotal fourth down is on deck. And they sent Vince Vachon there in motion. Desmond Stratton ran with him, giving Lupo an indicator that it's man coverage. They sent slants with a little, some, some, some small post routes there, trying to get inside leverage, trying to pick up, uh, throw it to your big body tight end there, Hunter Bellage. Uh, but just a little over his head, good defense there. Um, you know, fourth down here, fourth down and 12. You're going to have to pull out the best play you have right now. Michelotti behind Lupa. Jack dropping back. Thrown over the middle. Knocked up in the air. And intercepted. The second INT tonight for the senior captain, Anthony Scott. Really good job here. They're going to bring a middle blitz here. The middle linebacker, Corey Cobb, is going to run up the middle. Understanding that, there's a little bit of a vacated window in the middle. Oh, no, excuse me. The middle linebacker blitz. And then Corey Cobb was the one with that PBU right there, laying the wood, making it a very hard catch. Uh, he still would have been a little bit short of that down to, down to gain. Um, really big play there. And, and as that Roseville sideline kind of erupts in, in pure you know, happiness, you still got to keep in mind there's three timeouts here for Gross Point South, right? If they go three and out, they have an opportunity to go down and try to get something going here again. So you know, if you're Roseville, this is where good teams close games. Uh, let's see if they can do that. This second half has been a battle of wills. Roseville was up 10-0 at the break. We've gone back and forth in what has been a tremendous night of football. Give to Weathersby. Running left. Keeping the legs moving. Second and third effort. Excellent for Brian Weathersby. He didn't get the first down. He gained about nine and a half. Gross Point South got to burn a timeout. And unfortunately, there's a Blue Devil down. Haven't been able to get a number on who it is. Uh, hopefully they're okay. Um, you know, Weathersby just kind of was running through those tackles as you know these defenders were trying to tackle the ball there. Um, you know, unfortunately though they got nine yards there, picking up almost a first down. Uh, they're gonna have to really pull out some defensive stops here in order to get you know the ball back into Gross Point South offense's hands. It's Franklin Gallagher getting up to his feet. Gross Point South came in. 9-1 and one, with statistically the best defense in the state of Michigan. They've given up 52 points all year, but Roseville has scored 24. The most any team has scored on Gross Point South all year. 
Blue Devils will burn that first time out. Time out, Blue Devils. The Roseville coaching staff told us when we talked to them earlier this week, we look back at that first game, we thought it was just too many opportunities where we didn't execute. Yeah, offensively, I mean, only putting up seven points uh, against uh, you know the Mac White back-to-back -back conference champions. That's not going to get it done. Um, but it still was a close game. You know, Gross Point South won by a blocked, uh, you know, a blocked field goal or a blocked punt, excuse me, for a touchdown, um, you know, which really propelled them to win. Uh, but when you play a team twice in one year, especially one that's in your conference, uh, there's a lot that you can go off, a lot of material, a lot of you know film that you can break down. Uh, and, and right now, Roseville has the upper hand. Uh, they got a few yards to pick up to close this one out. Uh, but Gross Point South, I mean, the way they fight, the way they're coached, the, the discipline that they have, can't count them out yet. Second down, one. Weathersby behind Sims in the pistol. That's who they give it to. Brian lowering his shoulder, trying to spit ahead for a pivotal first down. Brian He's darn close. They will spot that football. And Jake Cozell. And Gross Point South will burn their second timeout. I believe I saw one of those officials signal that Roseville had the first down. Speaking of officials, every high school sporting event in the state of Michigan has one thing in common, all those officials, and they're needed now more than ever. Go to MHSA.com for more info because without officials, it's only practice. Well, they've spotted the football. He does not have the first down, by the way. I did see one official signal first down, but maybe he was doing a one-handed signaling of Gross Point South called a timeout. So, it's still third down, by the way. Roseville did not get the first down on that last play. And if Gross Point South can stop him one more time, we get the ball back. Yeah, absolutely. And there's been a lot of these, you know, one yard you know, in question, you know, plays here today. But this is the first time we've gotten that down the line view right here from the press box. Uh, and he's about, you know, about a yard short, sitting here at third and one. You gotta imagine you know, that this Gross Point South defense is gonna try to bring the house here. They're going to five down the line and look. Give Stratton, Desmond Stratton, first down. The biggest play of the night is a run of two. Desmond Stratton gets up slowly. That man has been working his tail off. He has, and that's been the, the biggest 12 inches that he's had to get. I mean, this game is all about the inches, all about how close can you get it. You know, and he does a fantastic job there of driving through. Looks like he's about to get tackled. Out, Those legs, man, he powers through, picks up that crucial one yard. Gross Point South calls the final timeout. They need a miracle now. Roseville's got the first down. A kneel down or two, and this is over. And this is the part of it, right? Where in a game like this, Gross Point South was down by 10 at halftime, but they battled back. They tied it up twice at 10-10 and 17-17. They're a team that's had a great season. They're 9-1 coming into tonight. We've talked so much about that defense. You hate to see anybody lose in this type of game. But it's a Roseville team littered with talent. It's a Roseville program that is ascending. This would be their second district title in the last three years. Oh, by the way, the team that they would play next week for the regional championship, De La Salle, they've got a lot of history with them. They lost in the regionals in 21. They lost in the first round to De La Salle last year. Based on what we've seen tonight and the athletes for those guys in black and white and red, I don't know, it could be a tough one for the Pilots next week. Yeah, yeah, and, and you, know, you go into a game and you, you scout these guys, but when you get on the field versus them, when they, you see how fast they're running, you see how hard they run, I mean, this Roseville team, if they play together, they play all three phases like Coach Snowden has been preaching. They got an opportunity to, to make a run here in these uh, Division II playoffs. Jordan Sims takes the knee. That family is hoping to have uh, a reunion at Ford Field Thanksgiving weekend. Jordan's brother, Kevin, one of the best wide receivers at the state. He plays for maybe the state's best team, the Belleville Tigers. His brother, Jordan, is the quarterback at Roseville, and that entire bench realizes that they've just won their second district title in the last three years. And when you have the, uh, the opportunity to line up in what we call the best play in football, that being the QB kneel, when you can end the game on your own terms, I mean, there's nothing better. This is a core memory 
for all of those guys in red and white. And this is a core memory for the Roseville football program. They come on the road, knock off Gross Point South, get revenge for the loss in September, and for just the second time ever, they're district champs. When Coach Bernard Snowden took the job five years ago, he said he took it because he'd go drive by their practices. He'd see the potential. He knew there was a chance for this program to do something great if they built the foundation for it. Uh, Coach Snowden would know about that. He used to coach at Detroit King. Here, that program's pretty good. Well, this Roseville program, if you're sleeping on them, you shouldn't be. They just beat a darn good Gross Point South team. And that game against De La Salle next week is going to be a lot of fun to follow. Yeah, that will be. It'll be interesting to see who comes out of that one there in, in the regional. Uh, but like you said, Evan, you're kind of building the foundation here at Roseville. You know, the past five season coaches, you know, just been trying to stack bricks, trying to stack wins. And right now, he said he's seen the most buy-in, uh, the most commitment uh, that he's had in a while. We're going to break and come on back to wrap it up from Ghost Point South after this. Did you know you can reach a large family audience through high school athletics? State Champs Network has recorded the journey of high school student athletes for over 20 years. The successful Game Time Live during football season is sold out. Opportunities are now available for the winter sports season, including Game Time Live for boys and girls basketball, hockey, and possibly cheerleading. Are you interested in getting your brand in front of a passionate and targeted audience? Please reach out to John Watson from our sales team for more information at jwatson at statechampsnetwork.com. Find a way. Back of a night of football here from Gross Point. Gross Point South falls to Roseville 24-17 in a classic. One of those games where you hate to see a high school team lose. Roseville, the winners tonight. They're off to play De La Salle for a regional championship next week. You know, Grant, we talked about the talent for Roseville at the top of the broadcast. They got a lot of dudes that are going to go play college football. But what we learned about these guys tonight, you punch them in the mouth like Gross Point South did early in that second half, they'll swing right back on you. Yeah, and that wasn't the case early in the season. Early in the season, you know, coach had to fight complacency amongst these teams, uh, amongst this team. Uh, week after week two, they got ranked in the state, and that you know put a little bit of a, a complacency bug on their shoulder, if you will. Uh, but each week they've gotten better. Each week they've understood that we got to stay hungry in order to compete with these top teams in the state. Uh, and that loss early, uh, you know, in the year to, to Gross Point South really put them back. Really had them, you know, get back to the drawing board. Uh, and right now they're reaping the benefits of this team buying in. This team getting rid of that complacency bug and finding a way to win here late in this game. It's that time of year, we start raising trophies after victories. Roseville about to raise a trophy, raise a district championship for just the second time in the school's history. Coach Snowden still isn't smiling. That's a man that knows the job is not finished. Kids may celebrate, you know, you get the 24-hour rule, but I guarantee you Coach Snowden's already thinking about that next opponent which will be De La Salle, who they have lost to in the playoffs each of the last two years. If you're somehow complacent playing a team that has beaten you in the playoffs the last two years, it's kind of what Coach Snowden, similar to what he told Liz walking off the field, if I gotta tell these guys to not be complacent in a district title, and next week playing a team that's beat us in the playoffs the last two weeks, I don't know what to tell them. It should be a very good game next week. It should be, and De La Salle's got some really good athletes, and so does Roseville, and like you said, there's a little bit of history there, and, and you know, it, Coach Snowden said it, you know, if I can't get these guys motivated, then I, I don't know what to do, and, and these guys are gonna come in motivated. De La Salle's gonna come and motivated. Uh, should be a really good regional final there. Uh, it'd be one to follow. So what you're seeing right now is the Roseville team get some medals for winning the, the district championship. This is a peek behind the curtain. Grant and I both played on multiple Catholic Central and Brother Rice teams that won district and regional championships. Do you still have those medals? Because I don't. You know, I, I can't even, I didn't even remember that we got those, to be honest. You know, I was like Coach Snowden. I'm always thinking about the next game. But, no, I'm just joking, man. Ah! I, I take everything seriously. But, no, I, I, I didn't remember getting a medal, to be honest with you there. I remember getting them, and then I, I don't know what I did with them. But these guys deserve it. Look at the smiles on those faces, man. 
Roseville program that's on the rise. There's no doubt about that. Just came on the road, knocked off a program that has been darn good for a long time. The Hepner family has been leading this Gross Point South football program for generations. But tonight, Roseville on top. There is no feeling in the world like celebrating a championship in someone else's building. Coming into a hostile environment like this, you know, facing the elements, you know, fighting back, going down and scoring late, Given Anthony Scott his first touchdown pass with a beautiful toe tap. I mean, guys stepped up when the other players you know, were getting shut down and you know, Eric Slater got injured. Hopefully he's okay. Uh, they're going to need him next week. Uh, but I mean, this team fought. They're battle tested. They've had losses that set them back, but they've gone back to the drawing board and they found ways to win. Uh, and that coach right there, uh, Vernon Snowden, I mean, I'd play for him after talking to him. I mean, heck of a coach, heck of a guy. And he just loves his players, uh, and you can tell. Uh, and he just said that he appreciates it when those players, you know, show the love back. And it's, it's a good culture going over there, going on over there in, in Roseville. Coach Snowden will say they're not done. He'll say there's still work to do. But hopefully that man can hit, put his head on the pillow tonight with a smile on his face. Because they deserve it. Yep. And I guarantee you he'll have one eye open, though. Like thinking about those pilots game. coming up this week. We wish everyone safe travels home. Roseville moves to eight and three. They avenge the loss to Gross Point South early in the season in the third week of September. Busy night of high school football across Michigan. Roseville preparing to face De La Salle next week for a regional championship. When you win a district championship for only the second time in your school's history, absolutely take some videos. Absolutely take some pictures. Cool moment for a program that has been looking through a breakthrough like this. I believe they're lining up a group shot. This reminds me of a wedding, you know? Just, just let's get every combination of photos. It's like a family vacation. You know, I gotta go to the beach, gotta get the group photo, you know? Yeah. Are, you, are you a good picture taker? As in taking the pictures or being taken pictures both, of? Both, both. I'd say I'm average. Okay. I, I won't boast in that category, but I do remember, you asked me about the medals. I do remember how hard it was to get your hands on that trophy after a game. Everyone wanted to hold it up. Everyone wanted a picture. Um, so that was one thing I do remember of those days. Of, you know, that thing was you know getting tossed around like a hot potato. But man, trying to get it for a picture that was a hard thing to do. And there's a smile on Coach's face. There we go. It took three hours. We finally saw the smile. That photo you just saw being taken will be on every member of that football team's Instagram within the next 60 minutes. I know how the game's played. We'll see how Roseville shakes out against De La Salle next week. De La Salle has ended their season the last couple of years, so you'd have to imagine that is in uh, the back of the minds of all those guys on the field. Liz Kuhn is down there somewhere. She is traversing through the traffic trying to get everybody in position. Let's go down to Liz, standing by with Coach Snowden and Destron. Hey guys, all smiles down here on the field. You know, okay, how do you put this into words? Uh, man, they played their pines off. We fought, um, had our ups, had our downs, but I'm more so proud of these guys because they fought to the end. Like it could have easily been, you know, when they got up on us or when they tied it, we could have went down. But for the most part, our guys kept fighting the whole game. Yeah, and talk about a battle. How are you guys able to find a way to get this one done? Uh, uh, just uh, during practice, like practice all week, it was high intensity, trying to go back to our week one and week two, how we got those dominant wins, just trying to be dominant again. Yeah, and what makes this group so special? Man, you know what? It's, 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 it's strange because um, these kids love each other, really, and I mean that wholeheartedly, all of them. We didn't have, you know, we had our downs um, early part of the season, but for the most part, these kids love each other. 
uh, and, and it's special. They're special. Yeah, and talk about being able to play with this group. I mean, what are your feelings towards it all? Uh, I love my brothers. Like, it's all love. Like, ooh, I, I can't wait. Ooh, like, uh, <laughs> sorry. But no, it's all love. Like, I love playing with them, love going to practice, 6 a.m. workouts. Loved all of it. Yeah. And you said we're not done yet. Uh, you you got, got more work to do. Yeah, we got. You know, I mean, this is a goal, but not the goal, not the ultimate goal. We took it one step at a time, and a goal was to win our district. We did that. Now we're going to celebrate. And now, I mean, the last what three, four years, you know, we've played one team and one team only who have knocked us out the state playoff. And we, you know, we got to get ready for that. Yeah. Well, go celebrate this one. Thank Congratulations, you, you Thank guys. You. Thank you. Appreciate From it. all of us here at Game Time Live, thanks so much, and we'll see you guys next week. Champs Game Time Live is delivered by Hungry Howie's Pizza, celebrating 50 years of flavor. State Champs Game Time Live is also brought to you by Lawrence Technological University. Be curious, make magic. The future of education begins at ltu.edu. Alta Equipment, Michigan's number one construction equipment provider, proudly representing the industry's top brands. Get the right equipment for your project every time with Alta Equipment. The Construction Association of Michigan, the voice of the construction industry in Michigan. U.S. Navy, transform your life and become part of something bigger. Learn more about naval careers at Navy.com. And the Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics.